It's time. Yes. It is time for me to fix a Discord notification. So turn this down. Yes, hello. Uh, it's, I'm so glad we're gonna fucking do this. This game is a fucking magical experience. It's great, because I have an idea on how to prevent this thing from getting content ID. I'll be here in a moment, making chili. Uh, yes, I'm... if you say, for example, filter and produce the com or color key and then have something play in the background. Also, while ah, there's the... dead air, I can pop something else on. Ah, the chitlin strategy. No, because that's a lot easier and probably would be better. What, so you can just, like, put an animated, like, what they do with the bootleg videos, just put an animated GIF around the border? I could, yeah. I mean, yeah, like, that's what Torpid does when we're shitposting and it gets... <laughs> you guys must know a lot more about this game than I do, because from what I've seen of this game, it's really just dull. I've... Seen it played through twice. I've only seen it through it once, and uh, it's more of the the way this goes, and the whole no, this isn't. What is wrong with you, this, all of you? This isn't what psychiatry is. Well, the script is terrible, but I mean, like, I've never actually, I've seen two playthroughs, I've never seen any nudity. So you guys must know more about this than I do. They're definitely at least the ones that I saw. There definitely was. Yeah, there was definitely nudity. Well, the playthroughs I've seen were people going through it blind, so I suppose if you had to walk through and knew what to look for. And by because you're saying like the actors actually get nude, not yes. just the stupid pictures. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna learn something today. I learned many things today. <laughs> oh, good. Today I am a gamer man. <laughs> Oh, that how unfortunate. <laughs> I forget, did the 11th hour actually come out? Yeah, I thought that came out like a while ago. Like, I never see anybody do plays of 11th hour. Everyone talks about 7th Gast and everyone talks about TLC. No one talks about 11th hour. It definitely came out because I had a professor who, in college, that gave a talk about how to solve some guess puzzles using linear algebra. And I brought up, it was like, oh, did you realize that there was a sequel? I was like, yeah, it's 11th hour. Yeah, okay, it did come out in 95. No one ever talks about it. All the attention's on TLC and 7th Guest. Maybe it wasn't good. Well, these other games aren't very good, but, um, I mean, TLC has the Fatal Attraction thing going for it, and Seventh Guest was just, like, the first freaking CD game. Yeah. You're not the only one, Tyrion. Also, everything's coming up Lolo, it seems like, in translation from because uh, 
the Genesis version of uh, Mato Monogatari got uh, translated today. Which... Uh, why? Because this game has no music, so I had to pick something. Okay, I, I don't know what game that is that you just mentioned. Uh, so it is the game that Puyo Puyo is based off of. I didn't know Puyo Puyo was based off of. I'm learning stuff. It's because today. it's a Jap it's an RPG that only came out in Japan. That's I why. have chili. And now I'm ready for some tender loving care and this chili. The axe, I'm just gonna tell you now, you're not gonna be happy about this game. I'm not happy about a lot of things, Carnival, so I feel like that kind of tracks. I'm ready to be taken away by this tender love story about care. Yeah, let's go with that. Trying couscous for the first time. Oh. Couscous in chili? At the bottom of it, yeah. So I suppose is it, that could work. So it's like the thing, instead of using, like, spaghetti or uh, some other starch, you use that? I guess that's the recipe I was given. Huh. And the, the, the directions were weird. It's like, oh, put in three quarter cups of water and then, you know, boil it. And then once it boils, just turn off the heat and cap it. It's like, shouldn't I cook it? Like, no, no, it'll cook on its own. It's fine. It's like, okay. Is it like pressure? I don't know. No, it's just in a regular pot. Huh. Just regular pot, put a lid on it. Oh, yeah. Uh, that would probably retain heat. Though, I wonder if they it's intended you to have a particular kind of pot. Yeah, I'm just guessing, a regular pot. I'm guessing what they wanted you to do is boil off some of the water and then use the rest of it to steam it. Basically, is what they're I, I'm getting. Still very hot. Yeah, we're pretty cool. And spicy, oh. very spicy. Would, Never heard of the spice be, before. I would be worried it's a little like acidic because couscous is like a little. Acidity, and then so is chili. All I know is that. Hold on, let me see what the spice was. Ooh. Yeah, so it had me put in two teaspoons of something called Ross El Hano. Or Hanoa. Or Hanout. And it's super, like, cinnamony and spicy. Cinnamony? Yeah, you're going, you're going Cincinnati chili style on this. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, I... The only, like, Cincinnati chili-ish thing that I know of is just... Uh, there's a place here that they're chili that you always put, like, spaghetti in. Hmm. Which is I really good. I had to keep the chili on for a while because it was still like they they had me add what was it uh, three quarter cups of water for the first bit of it and then another cup of water and it's like no that's too much water it's gonna take forever so I finally got it down to like a nice thickness yeah I can imagine if you put in that much water that's probably what they want you to boil it but yeah, yeah but they, some... they, they only said like eight to twelve minutes it's like no that took me at least twenty to thirty minutes to get it to a proper thickness. It was a little weird. Ah. But yeah, Cincinnati chili tends to have, like, shaved chocolate or cinnamon or other sweet stuff in it. Huh. It, it, oh, this it, has golden raisins. Okay. That, that's that's a different thing. choice. Yeah, that's the, that, that's the recipe they decided to go with. It's like, all right. Well, what do you think? Um, so far, I mean, the first bite was all right. I'm kind of waiting for it to cool down a little bit, but, you know kind of hoping that the heat dies down just a tad bit. Because, whew, this is a spice. Spicy spicy. Mm -hmm. Sounds like an adventure. Mm -hmm. It's like the only way I can eat peppers, because I don't like the texture or the taste, so this is kind of working out alright. My 
there is a, a regional sub place by me that recently got a there they added two sandwiches which they call like 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 world fair i guess or like right. like i forgot how they call it but uh one of the things they have that i want to try is a red pepper bon mi um Ooh, bon mi yeah those are fun uh, the only thing about it is that <laughs> basically um like they basically it's just a bunch of vegetables the red peppers are like roasted in something but um Right. The they basically they add barbecue sauce and a special kind of mayonnaise, which I'd probably take off because I don't like mayonnaise. Mm. Excuse me, aioli, which oh. whatever. Thanks for reminding me. There's a topping I need to get. Hold on. And I I, I kind of want to try that. <laughs> I never did finish this game. I, I which wish one? I lost the uh, Spider-Man oh, Spider 2. Like, I've... I had a copy of it, could not find what happened to it, it was just sad, but... I had never played it. I don't know. It's kind of amazing, because Spider-Man 2 basically sets the foundation for every Spider-Man game afterwards that, that like, has an open world. Like, it's amazing how foundational it is as a movie tie-in, even. Yeah, Spider-Man 2 is pretty famous for being the best Spider-Man video game? I mean, there I would say some stuff that's come out more recently has been better, but it's like straight up probably one of the top All right, five. So that, that's what this was missing. So there's a topping made of labneh cheese, uh, garlic paste, uh, salt and pepper. Huh. All right. Yeah, the cheese would, would cut, cut off some of the heat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, let's go ahead and get this show on the road. Speaking of cheese... All right, here we go. Okay, so hello and welcome to this Friday edition of Retro and Rhapsody. Uh, as a recording, uh, it's Valentine's Day today, uh, so I felt like it'd be appropriate to do some sort of Valentine's Day game. Well, um, <laughs> so back, turn the way back machine all the way back to let's say about three years from now or ago, um, basically. Uh, we we're looking for thing. I was looking for things to stream because I had not started like ranking of shmups yet. So, uh, one of the games that came up because it came up, uh, I frequently watch giant bomb videos and they took a look at this game called tender loving care. Um, which I was like, Oh, this looks silly. I'll go ahead and try that. Uh, the moment that I was about to do that, I think I actually was about to do that for Valentine's day, like 2000, like 16 or yeah. 15. Um, That's right. But the thing was, is that right around that time, Twitch put out a bunch of guidelines basically saying, hey, we don't want you streaming any game that basically wasn't rated. Or it was like, basically, some like something that this game technically might have fallen in. Uh, so I never... No I, naughtiness. I never actually streamed it. Um, but uh, as it turns out, uh, plenty of people have streamed on Twitch and with no problem. So... Uh, why not? Let's go ahead and do this. Um, because the thing about this game, uh, and I'm going to be very clear, uh, I apparently there are ways you can avoid it, um, but this game uh, does, at least from some of the playthroughs I have, does have a fair amount of nudity. If you remember our playthrough of Phantasmagoria 2, yeah, it's that kind of level of nudity. So uh, be warned, and I have a text message on the screen that you'll see that, yes, uh, this could get uh, naked at any point. Uh, Prepare it, for tits. Yes. 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 <laughs> As the heat kills me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, just to give a little info about this game. Uh, this game is by Trilobite... And game is kind of an interesting way to describe it, but uh, this game is by Trilobite Games. Their most famous game was The Seventh Guest, which is something completely different from this. Um, but... Uh, yeah, this is essentially a, trying to be an interactive movie. Um, this game actually, there was actually a DVD release of this game, I believe, that it's a game that you can play with a DVD remote. It's that simple. Um, so, yeah, that is what we're going to be taking a look at tonight, uh, and it will kind of make sense once we start it. Uh, so, let's go ahead and get started. Woo. Okay, let me go ahead and load this up. Uh, this is available on both Steam and Good Old Games. I am playing the Good Old Games version. 
Uh, yes, this way, no one on your friends will see shame. Oh, there's worse games I have on my Steam list. We're all seeing a shame right now. Um. And unless he plays any of the Nekopara games, I think he's all right. Oh, actually, I actually have, I have worse. Um, let's see. Let me just make sure it's going the right thing. Okay, so. Yes. I don't even care. Um. Yeah. Uh, it's like a shitty version of the X Files. The cover. Kinda. Also, let me turn this down a little bit. Um. So yeah, there's one key thing about this. Actually, let me. Look at do... that uh, dime store, Gillian Anderson, on the far right. Yeah. So yeah, let me actually get my cursor so you can I can actually point. Uh. So these actors kind of were never in something. Uh, this guy, on the other hand, don't know what you're doing here. This is way past your pay grade. <laughs> yeah, John Hurt, why? He was, he was, he was just uh, looking for something extra to do that weekend. He was bored. Probably, but yeah, so... Yeah, this game is certainly a thing. Also, I, from what I could tell, this game takes roughly... Four and a half to five hours to beat. So I'm probably going to cut it at about two hours. So probably go about until 10 o'clock EST. Um, just to make sure that I don't get, like, have it so that it's like, oh, I have an hour for next Friday stream. Okay, because I was going to say, it took about, like, three streams when Torpid streamed this. Yeah, but I think he streams for two hours, though. Right. So, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, let's just go ahead and start. Uh, no, I do not want to resume the last game. So here's also the best part about this game. You can see the interactivity in this. You click on the thing. It, it's just a video player. <laughs> you can, I could, I could like do, I could just do this all I want. All I have play. Here comes John Hurt in his sports car. Yeah. You think that was his personal car that they asked for him to drive up on? No, because it's on the uh, it's on the wrong side. Ah, you're right. You're right. Also, unfortunately, there is no subtitles. House, isn't it? I love this part of the valley. But as the saying goes, looks can indeed be deceiving. Places for sale now. Nobody's buying. Not after what happened here. It's troubling because no one really knows just what did happen. I should know. Oh, I'm Dr. Turner, by the way. I'm a psychiatrist. I was close to all the players in this event. But it's as much a mystery to me as it is to anyone else. Is your shit at your job? <laughs> Perhaps you will see. Help. A fresh eye and uh, an uncluttered view. And maybe together we can reassemble the happenings and get a better understanding of what took place. We can only hope. Heathcliff! <laughs> Apparently this was based on a book? Yes. Yes. It's even less known than this was. I was going to say, based on a book does not mean much, though. Oh my god, it's it's just like Wuthering Heights. That's the feeling I'm getting right oh, now. Oh yeah. Great. And remember, there weren't any drones. They had to rent a boat for this. Oh yes! Operatic music! I'm in my zone! Why, the budget of this video game might have gone as high as one million dollars. Can you imagine? Oh, um, it was that, just hiring John Hurt. Yeah, I was going to say, if I'm not sure said that, was probably John Hurt. 
Mr. Hurd, since you took the entire budget, could you just drive your own car to the set, please? Thanks. They rented a fucking helicopter for this game. Yeah. This movie game. Max, keep that in mind. So they did actually release this game as a movie. Direct wait, to DVD. Wait. <laughs> On what, like Lifetime? No, it went straight to DVD. Oh, God. Not even good enough for Lifetime. That's pretty hurtful. This brings up question. Oh, well, I probably know what <laughs> enemy they use. And the best part is, they're not actually following the actors. They just hired the helicopter to just follow random people around and slowly videotape them. Uh, oh, yeah, that brings up a question for Lolo. Yes? Were you shooting for a specific ending in this? There is an ending I'd like to get, but I don't know how to get it. <laughs> is it the harem ending? Please, no. <laughs> is, it, it, is it the golden ending? Or quote-unquote golden ending? Let me do this. I do not like couscous, by the way. Breakfast time. You're welcome. Did you get Charity's breakfast? Oatmeal and raisins, like always. She loves her oatmeal. Yeah, she certainly does. I see you're starting a new project. What's it going to be this time? It's a sweater for Jody. Thought so. It's her favorite color. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Allison, do you remember the nurse we discussed? The nurse for Jody? Yeah. Michael, I told you, I can take care of Jody myself. I know, I know, but Dr. Turner thinks it would be best if we just... Michael, please. He thinks it would be best for Jody. And that's what we both want, isn't it? What's best for Jody? Allison? Isn't it? Yes. Good. The nurse is coming today. Today? Yes, her name is Mrs. Randolph. Is she gonna live here with us? For a while, till things get a little better. Jody's not gonna like her. I think she'll be very helpful. And then maybe I can get back to work. And leave us here alone with her? Let's just give it a chance, okay? Let's see what happens. Allison. Okay. Okay. Good. That's certainly a static screen. Yep. Oh my god, that room doesn't even look like it's actually a room. It looks like it was green screened in. Oh, yeah. If you're wondering if this feels like a Hallmark movie, it absolutely does. Oh, yeah. It absolutely is a Hallmark movie. So, right off the bat, I want to say I enjoyed the Christmas shoes more than just the last ten minutes of this. This man says it's a $50 fare from the airport. Lady, it's 25 miles. $2 a mile. Mrs. Randolph? Yes. Am I being overcharged? I'll take care of it. She's some piece of work. I wouldn't tip him. He doesn't deserve it. Thanks for your trouble. Thanks, ma'am. Good luck. Michael Overton. Something wrong, Mr. Overton? You're not quite what I expected. 
What did you expect? You're very young. I'm qualified for the job. Dr. Turner said your qualifications were excellent. But you disagree? I just expected someone with more experience. I've been a psychiatric nurse for six years, and I'm a licensed psychotherapist. I I'm sorry. You just don't look like a Mrs. Randolph to me. I was expecting an older person, maybe a semi-retired widow or something. If, in your opinion, I'm unsuitable, then I'll leave. No, I don't. On the other hand, if I don't fit your image of a Mrs. Randolph... Stand by, ready? Sure just call me Catherine. Good luck. Get on with Thank me. you for the braid, Bear. Just in time. Okay, Catherine. Let me show you your room. Thank you. It was then that I realized she was going to need some tender, loving care to fit in. It's up the stairs. <laughs> Don't say such dangerous <laughs> things, Axe. Don't say things like that, Axe. <laughs> Turn right at the top. It's at the end of the hall. entire house remodeled last year. It's my parents' place. I inherited it after my father died. When was that? A couple years ago. I see. I like the guy, Michael Esposito, who act or is the guy. Uh, looks like he, he looks like the guy who's I'm been in like every that. he's like been in like she thinks you're here to take fifteen care of things, daughter. except he's Jody. only been in four movies. Yes. <laughs> Jody. Yeah, he's got that generic no white guy face. Of course. I like the uh, hair, though. Like to change. First. It's a very it's kind of like John Ritter. You wear a nurse's uniform or something. No, no John Ritter had wrong. more of like a, 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 a. He has his face was a little bit fuller. No, it, it, yeah, it's just the the hair. I can definitely see. We'll be downstairs in the living room if you need us. Interesting. I wonder why Michael was so no, taken the opposite. back with Catherine's appearance. He said she wasn't what he expected, but he seemed to be saying that if a woman has a missus in front of her name, she should be older. Now, what does that say about Michael? Or does it say anything? Now, there are some other points that I'm not clear about, and I could use some help. I like that any time John Hurt speaks, it, it sounds like he's speaking into a microphone from the seventies. About some of the things we've just seen. Oh yeah, I'm hearing a the reverb now. Questions. It's great. What emotion do you feel most strongly toward Michael? Okay, oh so, so here here is the gameplay of this game. Contempt. Are you Contempt. fucking kidding me? Contempt. Well, this it's is gameplay part really one because some there's feelings, something after this too. It. Let's see. No, that that that's a shitty thing to do. On yes. a scale from one to ten, how all the important time. is good sex to a marriage's success? Uh. uh <laughs> answer truthfully, what? Lolo. Let's call. Answer truthfully, Lolo. <laughs> let's see. I think to get something interesting, let's go seven to eight. Was it? Inappropriate for Michael to Dixie, question Catherine's the qualifications. Yes, it was. Yeah. I may do something slightly dangerous if I'm in the mood. Uh. No. I am so, generally a good person. <laughs> Welcome to this True. game. How did this you game that comes very awkward to play with people? In front of Michael. Um. <laughs> it, none of these. It's just she was taking her goddamn coat off. Um, uh, let's just say amused. I like to watch people doing <laughs> intimate movies. things. Hmm. No. Oh. Uh, Welcome to Tender Loving Care, a.k.a. Let's Learn About Lolo. Let's, let's just say <laughs> somewhat for giggles. All right. I have so part now. two. Explore the house. Oh, man, this is mobile game all over it. Yeah, it's Plus like a... Wait. a a BuzzFeed quiz interrupted by a room escape. 
give it a second. Hi, I'm Randy Vixen. Welcome to 1900 <laughs> Hot Licks. Get ready for the call of your life. You have chosen fantasy number 17, Naughty Nurse Nelly. Hello there. <laughs> I'm the night nurse. My name is Nurse Nelly Norton. You can just call me Nelly. I am when I'm so not, not turned hospital, on by this. I'm an erotic dancer. Oh, this is hilarious. I thought you said Legs you were a nurse. Like a Barbie doll, but my hair is fiery red and curly. I have sensuous lips that long to so be kissed. So your legs are made of plastic? And my full breasts are just aching to get out of this oh-so-tight <laughs> uniform. Like We're in bigger see? uniform. I think I'm going I the opposite would. direction. I'm actually now, like it's going completely non-sexual now. Bath. Like all all interested what sex is dead to me. That's good. <laughs> Happy Valentine's now, Day. Hell yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. Here we go. Oh. Look at those shoulders. You must work out. And By the way, we're listening to this oh, entire goddamn thing. Some scar. Let I me tell like you, from scars. Now, the phone calls are the, probably the best writing in the game. Let's let that sink in. Oh, well, I'm sterile now. Fuck it. Cool and clean where it touches your skin. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm washing your <laughs> chest oh, and your stomach. And oh, my oh my, what have we here? Looks like I've got more turn into a more infant? to clean every minute. Does that feel good? Oh, yes. Yes, it feels so good. It feels so feels good. So oh, 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 my. I'm going to need more soap. There we go. Oh, it's so slippery and warm. You're going to be the cleanest patient in the entire wing. Uh-huh. Oh, you're so hot. I think you've got a little fever. I can feel the heat coming right off your body. <gasps> Oops! I dropped the sponge. <laughs> I guess I'll what just have to fuck? use my hand. Hold on while I put on a rubber glove. Oh, do you like that? <laughs> of course you do. Oh, relax. The oh, there you go. Effect? Almost done. Oh, oh, yes. Uh. Yes, yes! Oh. Clean as a whistle. You're my most favorite patient. I'll see you tomorrow night. Okay. Welcome to Tinder Love and Care. Okay, God. let's let's back out of that. Um, I can't. T yeah. Is this? Is that the phone again? No. Mm -hmm. are, are, are you ending the stream yeah. now? Because nothing's going to top that. Yeah. I am never oh, having sex oh, right no, that's the phone again. again. Oh, there's oh, stuff that's actually, top Oh, 10. wait, wait, wait. I can just do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, time for this shit. Uh, yeah, so this is Allison's journal. Uh, yeah, okay. She's not coherent. I Let's see. Uh-huh. Uh mm-hmm. Let's see. So yeah, that, that's yeah. Okay, let's see. Let's go with the left, and I'm over here. I'm gonna need like over 15 here. showers yeah. to wipe off that phone call. Yes, ah, the ready, <laughs> the good, the good shit in this game. Okay. Oh boy. Have you yes. caught the Dr. Betty show yet? She's smart, wise, witty, tough, and fun. She may even be just a little bit psychic. She's a wife and a mother with a PhD degree in family matters and human relationship analysis. Dr. Betty will challenge, confront, delight, and even frighten you. She's the mother you always wanted, the sister you missed out on, and the wife you can't have. For I don't want them all to be the same problems, thing that's tune incest. Tune KPRB every day at noon. <laughs> Dr. Betty's the prescription your regular doctor forgot Tender to give loving you. care. Uh. I'm going to have to sit down for this. <laughs> oh, that's just the introduction. Oh, yeah, no, come back to those each time we get a chance, because they're great. Yeah, okay. All right, yeah, that's it for this room. Okay, so... Oh, you I can go here. And that all. Let, let's go to Catherine's room. Let's take a tour of this house. It's so unnaturally smooth. 
Like After a Barbie doll's legs. Formal meeting, Michael appears as described. A more current, thorough description of Michael is forthcoming. Scheduled interview with Allison will take place next. Who are you? And what are you doing in my room? Oh. Oh, wait a minute, I see. You're the, uh, viewer, right? Hmm. I didn't realize you could just sneak up on me like that. I'll have to be more careful. I never know what I might be doing. Well, I have to meet my patient now. You're probably gonna snoop around my room, aren't you? Guess there's nothing I can do about it. Oh well. You probably won't find anything too incriminating. I hope. So yes, we are technically characters in this game. God, some docket videos are sexier than this. Ugh. So Chad, don't if you if we're moving too fast with the reading, don't feel feel, feel fine to just ask us. To get yeah, if something. if I'm going too fast, please let me know. Please Why don't. isn't Lolo reading it out loud? Because I don't want to. <laughs> I I could read it out loud for you. If you want to, if you want to do it, go for it. I don't care. I mean, otherwise we're just gonna sit in silence most of this thing. Uh, I okay. should have anticipated this. I knew that Allison was married, but I hadn't really considered that her husband might present a problem. From everything Turner's told me, Michael's been forced into the role of caretaker for a woman who's become less of a wife than another child. But I was caught off guard. The way he looked at me, watching his eyes wander over my breasts and hips, filled me with an unexpected rush of excitement. Part of me wanted to encourage those eyes, but the better part had sense enough to shut the door. I have to watch myself. This case is so important. Too rich an opportunity. Next. to risk losing it over an attraction for my patient's husband. One of the benefits of becoming a therapist is not having to wear those damned uniforms anymore. But here I go, off to meet Allison in my Florence Nightingale disguise. I feel there's a parenthetical teehee at the end of that. Yeah. There's the second thing on that computer. All right. <laughs> yes, the computer. Hi. I miss you. And I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get in touch. You wanted me to tell you what I'm doing with my life, but you know what a crummy letter writer I am, so I came up with the perfect solution. I'll just talk to you as if you were here and send you these tapes. So I'm on my way to Southern Oregon. I'll be working on that case I was telling you about the Overtons, remember? Oh, it's okay, Tigger. Shh. Everything is okay. Oh, I'm taking Tigger to the kennel. He's not a happy cat. I don't know how long I'm going to have to leave him. Maybe a month. <laughs> Remember when we came back from Hawaii? How pathetic and depressed he looked. And that was after only a week. Shh. Don't worry. There'll be lots of other kitties to play with. And I brought you your special food and mousy toy. I'm driving to the airport. I'm feeling kind of sad. I guess I'm experiencing postpartum depression. If I get this worked up over leaving my cat, I can't imagine what it'll be like when I have kids and have to send them off to summer camp. I've been thinking about that a lot recently. Having something happen to your child would be horrible. The most horrible thing in the world. I've arrived at the Overtons. It's on a farm in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and I just realized I forgot my organic shampoo. Urgh. 
The room is okay. Nice and light. I'm here for softcore the porn. The bed leaves something to be desired. Right. It's as hard as a hospital mattress. Well, you've come to the wrong place. Is this boring you? I would disagree I'll bet you want to hear something greatly. more professional more like soft bore -like. porn. I'll give yeah. it a try. Yeah! <clears throat> Got <clears throat> it right. <laughs> Notes for Allison's official case study and medical documentation. After a brief informal meeting, Michael appears as described in diary. A scheduled interview with Allison will take place next. All right. Yeah, all of these are terrible. Every single recording. Mm-hmm. How to bore These are audience. worse, though. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> to Amanda Maynard, Black House Publishing. Dear Amanda, it was great talking to you the other day. I'm quite enthused about starting on the book, especially after meeting you. Working at the Schneider Clinic, one of the most respected centers in the country, for the treatment of sexual disorders, was some remarkable experience. I was intimately involved in the cases of dozens of fascinating patients. As Intimately. you will see, mm -hmm. as you will see, however, sometimes the staff were just interesting, just, really? Okay, sometimes the staff were just interesting as the patients they were assigned to heal. Left out a word there. The following is a brief outline of each chapter. Talk to you soon, Kate Randolph. So get ready for some cursed shit in the future. <laughs> Because this shit gets real cursed. We've already experienced sure. cursed shit. We had the phone sex. Yes. We had naughty naughty nurse Nelly. Which... Okay, but that's funny. That's bad, but it's funny. Okay. It it killed me sexually. On the night stand. Oh. I died inside. Two more over. By the bed. Ah. I, I can't even read that. What the hell? Oh, hold yeah. On. Hold on. I think I got this. Oh, there we go. No, don't. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, Torment, a much better game. Torment. Son, you weep each evening until your eyes turn red. Then, drowning in the sea, you are taken to an early death. But you are risen again. Light to the dark world. Fresh from sleep each morning, the proud and conquering hero. If only death gives birth to life... If only torment brings serenity, then how grateful am I that nature has brought such torment. Yo, this poetry blows. Yes, that's pretty pretty rank. I think I think it's just trying to explain what we're we're in for. Sexy witchcraft. Poke him in the butt. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, God. You don't need to read all of these. <laughs> It'll only drive you insane. Yeah, I just, no, my, no. my eyes just fixated on the phrase, old horny the old devil. Old horny? <laughs> old I horny. No, I have to read this one. Okay. I'll read, for, while sexuality is sacred to the witch, sexual pleasure is the true divine celebration of life during bride day. <laughs> Bride Day peaks during the spring equinox when the young god, the Horned One, breaks the chains of winter. Old Horny, the Horny the, Boy, the devil, like the witch as goddess, is filled with the sacred life force, with desire, with love juices. <laughs> he becomes passionate, a pure earthiness. As beast and part man, Pan the Goat Man, his sexuality is transcendent, part of the dance of life. The witch as goddess and the horned god are together untamed, fierce, free. Nothing can stop them during Imbolg. And desire breaks free after being dormant through winter. Light your candles to cast the spell of love, romance, and sexual desire in others. No. Wicca is... Wicca is... <laughs> Wicca is not a, constru yeah. a constructed religion. Child. And this is like this is... not even close. Yeah, 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 yeah. This this seems particularly foul. Yeah, this is like God. Come on. Oh my God, Lolo! Thank you for what you did. <laughs> I what, what I am taking you? this. None this of you. Name. None of you are getting this. That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, what don't worry. There'll be more. Yeah. Look at Lolo's name in the Discord ads. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Good job. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the bathroom. 
I mean, it, it's very fitting if anybody. Yeah. Also, the study is, is one of the two big places you're gonna be jumping between. Yeah. 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 I don't think there's anything interesting in the bathroom. Most of the rooms aren't relevant unless it's specifically singled out. Yeah, the like swirl symbol in the hallways. Or... I'll read out if it's interesting or funny, okay. or if I can make it amusing. This is just showing the meds that Allison's currently on. Which you yeah. can't read because oh boy. Okay, yeah, a, yeah I was gonna say look at the map real quick. So the only rooms that are really ever uh, relevant, hall. if they aren't marked, look are the master the bedroom, Hopper Catherine's painting, bedroom, and the study. Hawks. So yeah, go to the study first, because if you go to the hallway, you're gonna that advances the plot. Okay. Yeah. That was damn good chili, though. So, is this an upscaled or is this the original release? This is the original release. Uh, these are all video files that are playing. Yeah. It looked really smooth, but I guess we're playing on a modern computer. Yeah. No, once again, they're all video files. This, this is a video player, this game. Because, uh, Lolo, next time you go into a transition, click. Oh, yeah. Oh, we already saw that. Yeah. It's yeah. just a video player. That's like one of the first things I showed. No, no, I, I didn't disbelieve that. I'm just surprised there's such high, their render is such high frame rates with such great resolution. Okay. All right, so the thing we just looked at is just a bunch of, yeah, it's, it's her, it's a resume. Yeah, it's her, it's literally a resume. Yeah. Well, pay yeah. attention to very, very something specific that she has on her resume. I go, I think it's the next page. Uh. No, no, it's, uh, yeah, uh, second to last, isn't it? Yep, second to last. No. Where is the it? Massage. Are you talking about the sexual dysphoria one? No. No, go back. Go back a page. I think it's on the previous page. Um, uh, where is it? Previous page. Previous page. Previous page. Yeah. So listing her degrees, I think is it's it's. Psychopharmacology and mental health and nursing. Go back one. Back one. There's it's one that's very important. There we go. Alternative Wait. therapies. Meridian Sh Shiatsu Body Work and Massage Institute. Excuse me, Alternative, while I get all Alternative this. therapies for PTSD. Canadian. Wait, didn't oh, she say she didn't she say she got postpartum because she left her cat? No, she oh. she thinks that she's thinking that she's getting. I don't think she was being serious. Yeah, I think she's being like sarcastic, but okay. Yeah. Because I definitely didn't pick up those vibes. And I was kind of ready to say a few words. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, this. Yeah. The, we can already see from her first thing there. She's full of shit. Yeah. Is my character's name again, Mike? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Whatever. Are you ready for yeah. Mike's? Oh, <laughs> if you don't mind, Axe, I'll take. Yes. If you don't mind, Axe, I'll take this one. Have fun. Please do. It's the night before Mrs. Randall was to arrive. This evening at dusk, the trees stood so still that right across the field, I saw the dark mountains across the purple night sky. I heard a crow in the woods. It's so lonely out here. We haven't made love since the accident. We used to have such great sex life. We were totally in tune with each other's needs and desires. Gentle and loving with each other. Now, since it's untouchable, like a dream, she has to return to some previous state of innocence. I swear, if a rapist walked into the house, Allison would offer for him milk and cookies. What? I knew that I couldn't handle the situation with Jody on my own, and I finally convinced Allison to let somebody come in and help us. Dr. Turner found a specialist named Mrs. Randolph. I hope she knows what she's doing. I hope she can help. A family was killed in a car accident yesterday. A whole family. Mom. Dad. Two kids. I was worried that Allison might find the article. She never reads the next. One second. The paper, though. She doesn't listen to the radio either. Christ, she doesn't even watch TV. Dr. Turner told me I should keep a journal. He said, I have a lot of anger about the accident. No shit. Anger is just one of the emotions that I'm feeling. I could have given him a whole fucking list of feelings. Helplessness. There's a good one. And fear. I don't know. Maybe he's right. There's a, there are things that have happened to me that I've wanted to tell someone about. 
Things I've kept secret for so for too long. Things I've never even told Allison. I close those memories off, shut the door on them, and I can still hear them. It's like I'm living in an apartment with thin walls, and my memories are noisy neighbors who just won't shut up. I forgot about one of the most important feelings I have. It's constant. Like a toothache. A word that describes a whole line to itself. Desire. Or maybe it's just pure seething lust. I sleep with my wife every night. Next. But she's not really there. I see her walking around this house. It's like she's a ghost. I used to wonder what it would be like to go to prison. Now I know. I'm a prisoner here, too. I have a lot of time to myself. I've been thinking about the past. Often, I find myself thinking about sex. Could anyone blame me? But the fuck? (laughs) One night in college, I had one of the most erotic experiences in my life. Some friends and I went to a bar. One of the girls brought her cousin who was visiting from another school. The cousin was this real knockout. I mean, drop-dead gorgeous. She was very sexual, and she was wearing this real flimsy skirt and no bra. She told this amazing story about her trip to Europe that summer. She screwed this Italian guy on a train while the guy's girlfriend was asleep in the same compartment. She said it was the most passionate erotic adventure she'd ever had. Uh, here we go. Well, <laughs> after a while, we were all drunk. A lot more people showed up at our table. So the cousin playfully sat on my lap to make room for everyone. As she was sitting there, she started grinding her ass on my lap. It was so so nobody could ever nobody could tell what she was doing. It, it was driving me crazy. And then she looked over her shoulder, and gave me this incredible lusty look. Slowly, she hiked her skirt up in the back. I realized she wasn't wearing any anywhere. I couldn't believe it. She eased down my zipper and slipped it in. All of a sudden, I was fucking this girl in front of everybody. And nobody had any idea what we were doing. Everyone did. (laughs) Everyone fucking did. (laughs) The sex was unbelievable. It felt so dangerous and thrilling. We barely said two sentences to each other that whole night. And afterwards, I never saw her again. The fuck did that have to do with anything? (laughs) See, okay, so two things. First off, Death, you can't cop a fucking attitude. You asked for this. You directly asked for this. You took it away from me. I would have read it out. Second off, that is every single one of my sentries. Is this weird tangent he Mm -hmm. goes on every time. Yep. Okay. I feel like if we were delayed, I I really think it would be great if we'd like to. Do you wish to proceed? Uh, Did 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 you listen to the radio? Yes, we did. Yeah, he listened to the radio. I okay, the radio is the best part of, of this house. fucking game. Hands down, Let's the see. best part is the radio. I don't think there's anything in the kitchen or living room, but you can go there anyway. No, there's think, never anything in those rooms. I think we should roundtable the, the reading and just have everybody read. Yeah, because the, yeah. they, there's the video player. <laughs> you, are, yep. you already read Catherine stuff, Axe. So I wanted to spare you having to read that, too. <laughs> no, I think it would be funny just to have each of us read a thing. The I've mic seen. ones are my personal favorite. Just because yeah. every time he talks about really fucked up shit and then goes on this weird sexual tangent every fucking time. Yeah. How do you make tender loving care in Okay. What? Oh, great. <laughs> I... Claim dot use couch for more than counseling. Oh, okay, there we go. No, let's not read this. Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah. Let's, let's, this let's save the reading. Funny. Yeah, this is not interesting. The betrayal! Also, that the is violation. a thing that will never change. Yeah, okay, there's only let, one let, thing let, that's interesting in this kitchen, and that's, like, right behind you. So, Lolo, are you going to follow my advice for the quizzes? Aha! Wait, where, where was there it? it? Pass it back. One more to the left. So there we are. I love that large lad! Ooh, a wait, cow. Wait, Chunky cow. Wait, where is it? I want that painting. Lolo, painting. Legitimately... Oh, oh, just the painting. I thought there was something I could <laughs> click on. I legitimately <laughs> want that painting. It's such a good painting. Okay. So we could probably proceed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tyrion, the answer is incredibly. I wasn't kidding about the softcore porn thing. When you've concluded okay. this test, Wait, are you, you, you going to follow my advice the for the? Uh... Do you well, wish to proceed? I'll, I'll say what I, I would think I was saying, then you can say whether or not to click on it. 
Oh, no, no, no. I'm just saying, don't go for your gut instinct, because everybody's done that, and everyone's seen those endings. I'm pretty sure the way it judges your ending is based off of what you perceive the game to be in these quizzes. Okay. Although, that being Why said, this man the ending he wants is the one that would go with his gut feeling. Huh. Yeah, true. So these, I don't think they matter at all. Okay. Uh, and the answer is, he has no friends or family. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Why, why you gotta call me out like that? Uh, I was gonna say, he's not alone. His date is in the bathroom. <laughs> if you were an animal living You're in the woods shit. across the road, which of these creatures would you most like to be? Hmm. Come on. Uh, the answer is... Come on. But, like, yeah, let's... A dog. Is Oh, is this one matter? No, no none of these matter. No. I'm just saying my personal answer. Yeah, uh, dog I feel like personal answer. Bear. Bear. Yeah, let's, let's go bear. Do you like to look in people's windows? We love you, Bear. No. <laughs> yes, the answer is yes. I always do. You can't stop sure, me. Let's do it. <laughs> Most people wish they'd never gotten married. Uh, yes. I mean, if they're straight. True. I mean, the marriage <laughs> rates are like fifty percent. So. <laughs> Their divorce rates are like fifty percent, rather. Yes. So yeah. It's true. Really true. The marble yeah. statue symbolizes. Can't believe we dragged Bear to this game. What marble? Where is the marble? Let's see. Repressed Homer Rock desires. That's the hand. Yes. 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 Devised by. Uh. An author. An author. <laughs> an author. <laughs> yeah, let's go, an author. I can only also, I love that the morning you have up top. I am drunk or high. I, I've been neither, so it's uh, yes, no. the literal <laughs> inverse of the whiskey the dick. I see. Couple, uh, <laughs> Um, killing each other in a painting weird. above the mantle. Yeah, yeah. When I stare at clouds, I try to see um tits. I mean, uh, animal shapes. Um, go abstract monsters. pictures. God, oh God, <laughs> Allison. You ever look at monsters in the clouds? Shame that this game's a uh, bit of a slow burn. Chair. Say something, Michael. I said the nurse is here. Wow. She's very good. Is she? She has excellent qualifications. Jody's not gonna like her. You're back. She's gonna be afraid of her and she's not gonna like her. Two very big qualifications. Tonight on Hallmark. Naughty Nellie. Nurse Nelly. Allison, this is the nurse. Can't be. Nelly's a redhead. I'm Catherine. That's weird. It's all wrong. <laughs> Hi. I'm here to help you. I know what you've been Taking the name Please Nurse listen. Ratchet to a whole new level. Ho ho. <laughs> <laughs> you have a beautiful house. It was my family's farmhouse, but we don't do any farming anymore. So, uh, have you spent much time in the country before? No, not really. Well, you're in for quite an experience. And at first you're gonna miss all the noise and the hubbub, but... It's a lovely place, but I'm not here for a vacation, Mr. Overton. I, I understand that. This is the first time we've had a stranger come live with us. I know exactly how you feel. When I was a little girl, we had to have a nurse live in our house to take care of my mother who'd suffered a stroke. How horrible. Yes, but... Out of bad things, good things can come. That's what made me decide to become a No, nurse. it's fine. It's fine. Because this isn't the DVD version. The this is the game version. <laughs> game in the strongest of I mean, books. technically, we, this, go... we could just do an impromptu media delta episode when we're done oh, with yes. this. Yes. Of course we will. Yes, I am 100% yes. on board with that. I'm glad to hear that. <sighs> I'd like to talk Thankfully, to we're not finishing Jody this tonight. Happened. Oh, no. Definitely not. This is like five hours. I'll someone need some goddamn pretzels for this. <laughs> I'm just drinking sure. down some fucking That's peach okay, lemonade. Buddy. It's great. Contemplating eating it's the rest really of my couscous and chili. Do you eat? Yeah, maybe. Not up, motherfucker. It was delicious. Well, the couscous. You, you're gonna be in for a fucking ride. You may as well have something to go with it. Well, I'm yeah. not gonna be in for a ride. He's clearly gonna be yeah, in for a ride. Talk. I'm not. I'm just tired. here watching. She had a long day. No, he's going to be the ride. Uh, yeah. So where is she now? I don't know. 
In a room, I suppose. She didn't want to speak God, to I just first. I love the scrolling text up top. It's so good. Well. It's perfect. <laughs> so how was it? How was what? Your talk with Catherine. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Oh yeah, Catherine, that lady. Yeah. <laughs> that I have a cheap here. Sweet. What kind? Of course, I'm happy, Michael. Butter snaps. Why wouldn't I be happy to have mm. professional help Sounds for Jody? I'm not really a pretzel person, personally. Coward. But I thought. I do like those those buffalo mm -hmm. pretzels. I should get some of those. Really good. It's the right attitude. Oh, they're so good. I like those loaded you know, baked potato. Uh, potato this works chips. out. I may be able that to go one back company to work sooner than I thought. Uh, my personal favorite fun. potato chip is uh, salt and vinegar. Salt and vinegar, specifically from Uts or Oots. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's it's a, oh, that's good. good yeah. Have you read all dress chips? I have not, I and from what I know, it's like a very convenient thing. It really is. <laughs> don't forget to say goodnight to Jody. So wait, the both do the both of them want to bang the no. nurse? Is that what, what what's happening here? Maybe. Yes. No. It's. It is ambiguous with one of the characters. Like, this is more yeah. sexually awkward than I was as a teen, and that's pretty goddamn awkward. Uh, so. well, fucking strap in, dude, because it's only gonna get more awkward. Don't you mean strap on? No, no, no actually. No. <laughs> it's, it's not that kind of thing. I appreciate this how is all of us weirdly just... weirdly vanilla for what it tries to do. What was that, Carnival? I was saying, I love how all of us were basic, were basically in sync with the no. <laughs> I see a monster up there. If this is what you get when you get writers who have never done anything sexual adventurous try to write a sexual adventure. You know what's great? Is <laughs> reading uh, Tom Clancy try and write a sex scene? <laughs> oh god, that sounds horrible. Don't you mean the oh, opposite god. of great? Good god. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the Baron the Dragon has definitely a sex scene. Like, Tell me about how he invaded her Rhineland. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great because it's uh, between a like I think it was between a like a uh, like some FBI agent and like a Chinese lady, and it, it gets about as racist as you'd imagine. And when I say Chinese lady, I mean literally a lady from China. Right. Also, point pointing up to the disclaimer at the top of the screen. <laughs> yeah. Beware, tits. Yeah, get used to that window. We'll be seeing more of it. So, well, let's oh, find boy, out. We will. Did Lolo answer correctly? Oh boy, we will. One of my favorite scenes in the game involves that window. <laughs> oh, is, is it just us jumping out the window to our untimely? No. Head? I didn't hear you say no. Judy. I think she's asleep. I didn't want to disturb her. She's awake. I heard her right before you came. She's seen your face. I think you've already, you know, failed to accomplish yeah, that. Right back. Also, a fish Twitch guidelines say that it is okay to stream a game that has nudity just as long as you don't ogle at it. Right. Can I ogle him? Good night, Jody. Have good dreams. I mean, I can't see you. To be fair, this could go on. These are YouTube not just female fine. presenting nipples, so it's all fine. This isn't like this. So, so this isn't meant to be pornographic. It's a yeah. fucking yeah. lifetime movie. Just with titty. Yeah. No, this is meant to be like Basic Instinct type stuff. Yeah. Basic so Instinct was sexier than this, though. <laughs> <laughs> even the so no, even didn't... every other scene that wasn't the vagina scene was sexier than this. Do you... I didn't say this was good. Life. I know. Oops. I have no idea what Basic Instinct is. The way Catherine. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's also a, because it's Basic Instinct didn't have John Hurt talking to you every so often. <laughs> basic <laughs> Instinct is kind of a, a, a it's a movie it's an erotic it's thriller. Spot. It's the movie that killed a lot of VHSs. Wonder what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's because she's. A woman. It was Sharon Stone, no, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Sharon Stone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Once again, God, it's it's Sharon Stone though. This is an important thing. Yeah. Just full on flash in the cooch. What in front of Newman. Of the window. Mm -hmm. it seems but yeah, so also it doesn't help that you always there. have John Hurt just jumping in out of fucking nowhere to talk at you. First of all, that's my deepest kink. How fucking dare Michael. you. Michael. <laughs> so is it me or is the game a little Allison. quiet? Oh, uh, it might be. I can turn it up. 
I mean, you could just turn up the volume on your player. I have it maxed out, and it's still... Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, oh, no, that's on uh, me. I just realized that was my fault. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Michael loves Alice. So these are the questions I mean that I'm pretty sure shape your ending. Okay. Because yeah. based on how you perceive the plot to be. So what do we go for? Love. Anna, follow your Love. heart. Okay. I would yeah. trust the mental health of myself or a loved one to a psychiatrist. I mean... Yes. In, well... In personally, in yes. Well... Hi, everybody. What do I get? So the answer is never. The answer is never? Okay. No, no, what do you want? What do you? What ending are you going for, anyway? I'll, I'll type it to you. I'll DM to I'll okay. DM it. If it's the one I think it is, if it's the, the, the really good one, <laughs> yes. then I'd say just follow your gut. Go for the best ending. Because that usually gets you there. No, just tell him. Just tell him the answer. Well, it well could, no, no, no. It, I mean, like, like the normal answers yeah. are what usually get us there. Nurses like to Which boss people Which is weird, around. but whatever. Which of the no... following terms best describes the way Catherine appeared in her uniform? Sinister? Hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say sinister. God has an influence on my life. Not at all. Had Michael fantasized about Catherine before she appeared undressed in front of her window? Yes. Yes. We, we, we... Yeah. You read oh. that fucking shit. My drives might be put in yeah. the following order. Strongest mm. first. His is definitely sex. Leading. I well, hate that my none of these are correct for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a very specific oh. sequence that none of these suit. At least feeding for me, though. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't yours the be answer like... sex all the way across. <laughs> I thought your story was just feeding, sleeping, self-preservation, more sleeping. The answer might surprise you. Mm. I'm going to feeding first. Oh boy, here we go. Alright. All right. Uh, Bring it. So who wants to read this? Oh god. So who wants to read this one? Not I me. literally have trouble reading these ones. It's great. Fine, I'll bite. Go, go. Remind me never again to jump to conclusions about a person, because from the first instant I met Miss Randolph, Catherine, I mean, I liked her because she has very kind eyes, nice hands, and she's dedicated to her job, which I know that she wants Jody to get better, not because Jody is her patient, but because Catherine cares about life, because she is a true caregiver, but but I kind of get the feeling that Michael grates on Catherine's nerves, and he's been avoiding Jody, and he's been avoiding her, and it's hurting her feelings, so I have to tell him to say goodnight to her. Well, maybe she's afraid like me that something bad is going to happen, and maybe he feels so guilty about the accident, he's ashamed that when he sees her, I can't stand to have anyone touch me except Jody, of course, not since the accident, so someone touching me, trying to console me, to hold me, makes me sick, and tints up like nails. Yeah, this is Catherine, board. the wife's. Yep. Allison. Allison, 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 yeah, Catherine's the, the blonde. Sorry, it all blends together. <laughs> and sorry, I'm reading this kind of weird. It's just this yeah, is me so much. We can. No, it feels <laughs> fitting given how she writes like a fucking grade schooler. It's just it's hard to read. But poor Michael wants to touch me, but I can't let him. I can't stand to feel his hands. My own body. I can't stand it when he kisses me. Jody's body is so light. She's so st light that she it that it almost feels as if. She will float away, and sometimes she stares into space with this vague expression on her face, as if she were seeing right through me, as if I wasn't really there. Well, today I was sitting on her bed, and I began to weep. I was shaking and crying. I couldn't stop. Are you sad? I asked Jody. I told her I was crying because I was so happy, so happy that she was all right, and she's never going anywhere without a seatbelt again. She'll never be hurt again. I'm actually looking forward to tomorrow. I'm glad that Catherine is here. I am so angry. So, by the way, I just want to point out that the director of this game also was the director on 50 Cent Blood in the Sand. How's those pretzels <laughs> tasting there? Very good. <laughs> okay, so I want, to take, like... I want to take a moment to get on a soapbox and say that people who don't have uh, PhDs in psychology uh, or have never experienced, like, 
any well, kind of mental that, illness I'm gonna pause should that never fucking for a write second. this shit. Hi, I'm Dr. Oh, Betty Sharpstone. If you can't quite get your act together, if your issue is poor self-image and depression combined with a mix of self-pity, you need to read my new book, I Can't Stand Myself, 10 Ways Women Can Get a Life. I was a single mother. I worked my way through college. I even managed to get a black belt in Taekwondo. So don't try to tell me that you can't do it. Quit whining and get on track. A trip to your bookstore in a mere $24.95 could change your life. If I could personally come to your house to kick your butt, I would. But I can't. So I wrote a butt kicker of a book. Buy it today and listen to my daily radio show on KPRB. Now go out and get a life. Okay, that one wasn't... That, that had a Grand Theft Auto it. radio energy to it. Yeah. It's when they start, people start calling in on that show is when it gets good. You could tell when a, a mentally ill character is written by somebody who has no clue how mental illness works. Let's see. Yeah, because it doesn't mean reduction to a juvenile state. Like, why does you have to write, like, an eight-year-old with a crayon? Yeah. Like I said, this was, this game's not going to make you happy. Uh, well, that, alone made, that made me so furious. I'm sure this is going to be much... Well, actually, let's listen to this. Yeah. I just met with Allison. <laughs> it... It was very... disconcerting. I, she reminds me so much of Colette. The way Colette was when I first met her. Damaged goods the diamond covered with mud all that when i sat down so next I love to all these. and took her hand in mine these i felt recordings? my neck and chest because it's like backstory it's, but they're never fucking touched on the actual narrative it's similar to collect yeah it's, it's that look in her eyes it's it's hard to describe it at first they seem dull and lifeless like the eyes of a corpse but but then, just for an instant, you see a glimmer of life. You see her former personality. It's just the way she was before the accident. It's, it's just fighting to get out. I, I can see that Allison's true self is warm and vibrant and sensual. And I'm going to help her get it back. Oh, I know, I know. You're muttering, here we go again with the Mother Teresa complex. <laughs> well, sometimes I wonder if I did become a nurse simply because I'm drawn to wounded people. But I know that I am good at what I do. No, not good. I'm excellent. <laughs> and I really believe that we're here on this earth for a reason. My purpose in life is to help people get well. Michael and I had an immediate connection that... the wrong kind of connection. I'll just have to be careful with him. <laughs> and myself, too. Yeah, you're right. There's a strong disconnect between the movie portions, the Explore House portions, and the quiz portions. Oh, great. Oh, God, oh, right. God. this one! Fuck uh, you, I, Jeff. I'm so, oh. so angry right now, because I that... I forgot that, that we this... fucking start strong. Uh, <laughs> Fuck. well, okay, here we go. Here up, Axe. Ah, oh, all right. Uh, from Aphrodite. A man brought his wife into the clinic after he found her on the kitchen floor during the middle of the night, screaming and stabbing at her genitals with a knife. I fucking hate all of this. She was a startlingly beautiful young woman, a fashion model who had recently returned home from working in Paris, where she had been suffering from a prolonged bout with walking pneumonia. The patient had to be put in protective gear to prevent her from hurting herself. The patient's family doctor revealed to Dr. Turner that she had been born as a girl, but during puberty, hermaphroditic growth of a penis had occurred. Uh, parentheses, actual growth of male genitals on a normally developed female body is very rare, but it does occur. In parentheses. At that time, surgery was performed to remove the unwanted organ, and she was given female hormones to counteract the testosterone, which was invading her body. 
She was not, however, given extensive counseling. As a result, she was now suffering from psychosis. Dr. Turner believed that the ill health of the patient and the extensive traveling had increased susceptibility to the occurrence of hallucinations. The phantom phallus was a manifestation of the childhood trauma. The fuck this That was game. a weird working title from Elgar Solid 5. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. The real phantom. I, I want to say that the that bit with the actual growth of the male gen- that was totally a writer of this game just like i totally looked this up honest <laughs> god no i this, heard this... about it from a friend who knew a doctor all of this is somebody who has zero clue about any of this writing i guess it's up it. again Fuck. all right i'll do this one i'll do this one too uh i'm shaking allison looks shockingly like colette i even thought for an instant that she was colette move your cursor oh, sorry that old dizzying burn it's been ages ages since i since it last weakened my knees now it radiates out from the center of my body i don't need you to highlight the letters stop it i held allison's hands as i sat behind her on the sofa wanting and not wanting her to be colette i don't think they noticed how distracted i was allison my heart goes out to her and michael it's just everybody's fucking horny I couldn't yep. see him, but I know he was out there alone in the dark, watching. Edward Carnby was out there. Okay, why does she not write anything that's any form of psychoanalysis? Like, it's just like some weird lesbian because diary. Because she's bad at what she does. Because no, they see. didn't actually get higher yeah. people that made and, higher consultants. Yeah, there's nothing new here over in the desk, oh, same okay. as before. They're not even oh, trying. So you'd say it was the same as it ever was? TAT will be the same the as it ever was? Same as it ever was? Look for the book. Yeah. Uh, my turn. Once in a lifetime. <laughs> Water flowing under. <laughs> Sploosh. That's my favorite Muppet song. Is it? So. <laughs> oh, let's hear it. There's oh, a yes. Shop oh, yeah. I'll take care of this Stop. one. Okay, oh no, what is this? God, yes! My favorite <laughs> hold on, hold on! Was what? that, was that, uh, was that Hugging the Shame Boy? Hugging yes, the yes, that is the name of the book, it's Hugging the Shame Boy. Shame Boy? <laughs> Why is this game? Oh, it gets better once you start reading the text. Yeah, no, I'll really read good. this one. Hugging the Shame Boy. About the author, Ar- Arthur Marlin was has been a therapist and guide for over 25 years. He is the author of I Walk Like a Man, The Underbelly of Paternal America Travels in My Mind, The Big Book of mi- Microbiotic Desserts, Bullshit, and The Goofy Sufi, a children's si- spiritual primer. He raises Fukunas in Marne Co- County with his wife and their 15 adopted children. Next. Yep, I'm trying to find an Oscar, sir. Fukunas? What are Fukunas? I will look up while the carnival's reading. No. The other day, the other day, a friend of mine, I'll call him John, phoned in and asked if he'd like to get together for a cup of coffee. He told me that he was having some problems with the wife, his wife, and he needed some help. I've been a licensed therapist and family counselor for 25 years, and I could tell just by the tone of John's voice that he was in trouble. We met at a restaurant later that day. John walked up to the table and sat down with a big sigh. His expression had the shocked, dazed, blank, numb look I've seen on the face of victims after a terrorist bombing. Susan is leaving me, he said matter-of-factly, and stared at the menu without blink. That's too bad, I replied. How'd this come about? She says I don't know how to love her, he said as he chewed on a fingernail. She says she doesn't love me anymore. I asked him, asked him how do you respond to this. Next. Okay, so the Vicuna is apparently in the same family as the llama and the camel. Yeah. Yep. I was going to say it, but then you said it. I don't know what to say, said John as he rubbed his forehead. I just don't know what to say, so I just stood there. That made her even madder. She packed a suitcase and left me. John's reaction of a typical of a lot of men. He was raised by a stern, stoic father who said things like, Only sissies cry and be a man and keep a sniff up a lip and don't play with dolls. You'll look like a girl. John spent his entire childhood suppressing his emotions and feeling shame whenever he was felt pleasure or love. Even masturbation was discouraged as a sinful, selfish act. And John couldn't <laughs> even love himself. <laughs> uh, John didn't want to go to war in Vietnam, but his father shamed him into enlisting. 
When John came home from the war, his psyche was scarred and withered by the experience. But even then, he was shamed and suppressing his anger and fear. Shame is the legacy of our Puritan and ancestor. Shame is the heritage of our fathers. Next. Same what as spell masturbation. But please, hug the shame boy. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how you spell masturbation. <laughs> It's not how you spell masturbation. God. Shame the seed. We will pass on to our sons if we do not break the cycle. The shame boy is a little voice inside of our heads that says, don't show emotion. Don't give your love freely. Don't look weak. In John's life, the shame boy had taken over his personality so completely he appeared to be a callous, uncaring, cold man. When In, rea in reality, John was a warm, loving, nurturing person. What I need to show... Him how to turn the shame boy into the lover boy. The shame no! boy. <laughs> the shame boy cannot be killed. The shame boy cannot be smothered. The shame boy must be hugged. By embracing the shame boy, it loses all its power. It struggles at first like a child throwing a tantrum. But after a while, it realizes it's helpless to resist and it's filled with love. Uh, Next. I mean, I mean, so I mean, smothering the shame boy is a good way to make it into the lover boy. <laughs> God! <laughs> So I smothering the shame boy is my favorite euphemism for <laughs> masturbation. Oh, I hate this so much. It's great. I gave John a match to repeat over and over again. Here, I want to say, I am I... a good boy. I am a heavy yeah. boy. I am a boy. I'm going to whisper to those to myself in a corner. Just say to yourself, over. everybody's uh. working for the weekend. Over and over. <laughs> he was instructed to sit in meditation for one hour every day and repeating this saying. Then I told him to stand naked and probably look there. Look at his body. He was a curse say, I'm a beautiful man. I'm a lovely man. I am a lover boy. Behold the shame boy in all its glory. <laughs> Afterwards, he was told to go on a long walk and say something nice to every living thing he met. A love walk. After two weeks, John called me up on the phone again. Let's go get let's get coffee together, he said. I've got some news. I met John at the same restaurant. He walked up to the table. He looked like a different man. His eyes were bright. His skin had a healthy tone. He smiled like someone had given a big, neat prize. Susan came back. He said with glee, We're going on a trip to Hawaii. Sort of a second honeymoon. I asked him how this came about. I did everything you told me to. He replied. At first, it felt kind of silly. But then I really started getting to it. After a while, I could see... It was as if I could see the shame boy standing in the corner of the room watching. He had his he had the real look at me look on his face. He made fun of me. Then slowly, as he as if he couldn't resist, he started to smile. He started to go to me with my love walk. Soon he was standing right there beside me, skipping and laughing. He said Sounds Good. terrifying. <laughs> Morning to everyone he met. We had conversations with homeless people. We even smoke spoke kindly to people we didn't really like. I remarked that that this was quite a breakthrough. That's the least of it. After two weeks of this, I met up with Susan. At first, she didn't even recognize me. When I told her, she, I when I told her I loved her, it was she practically fainted. Then we both started crying again. She said it was some beer. She started crying again, and I cried a little too. There's more. I visited all my old girlfriends and ex-wives and started warm, caring for beautiful relations with the, all of them again. Yep. Oh, and, no, it keeps going. No, I've read ahead, and I'm upset. <laughs> I asked him if these were sexual relations. Well, at first, they were just platonic, said John. <laughs> After a while, they started begging me for it. Man, it's fantastic. I'm having seven simultaneous relations. <laughs> All of them are warm, caring, and loving. I told them that this is quite a feat. Next. <laughs> Next. Buy your pickup yep. artist. <laughs> Thank you, said John. I owe you my life with that. You had never hugged the shame boy. When John left the restaurant, I could see his lover boy walking beside him, holding his hand. It, it made me cry all over again. The worst part is there are books like this. There are actual people I with the who written books like this. Yeah. I know. This is like, that's one of the best parody. That's not intended to be parody. That doesn't change. Okay. That's just the, yeah, this is the same as before. That'd be great if a resume just got like sexier over time. <sighs> Welcome to hell. Mrs. Randolph arrived. I have to admit, she's nothing like that I expected. First of all, she's very attractive. And young. She did something really strange. She began unbuttoning the sheer blouse she was wearing. And I have to admit, I was turned on. She gave me this sexy look. I 
couldn't help glancing at her breasts. I had a sudden impulse to touch them. It made me feel manipulated, though, like she was toying with me. Maybe she doesn't think about stuff like that since she's a nurse. But it seemed so inappropriate. For a second, I had the notion of firing her on the spot. I don't know. Was she flirting with me? Teasing me? It's so hard to tell. So look, if there's anything I've learned from shows like Grey's Anatomy, it's that nurses get horny too. Don't give me that shit, game. Of course. I don't know if I like her. Every time I started, tried to start up a conversation with her, she blew me off. Maybe she just wants to keep things on a professional level. But I was hoping we could be working closely together to help Allie. While Mrs. Randolph was getting acquainted with Allison, I took a walk in the hills. I hadn't been up there since before the accident. It's such a relief to be able to leave her alone. I realized that I need to get away from the house more. Maybe now that the nurse is here, I can go back to work. The other day, I had lunch with Leon. We went to this crappy Mexican place that he likes. He asked me when I was coming back to work, and I said that I didn't know. He told me that his niece was paralyzed from the neck down in a bicycle accident. Everybody in his family was so helpless and depressed. Everybody except the, except the niece. She never gave up hope. It's been a struggle, but uh, she's going through physical therapy, and she's getting some feeling back. Doctors think she might walk again someday. He told me that I should be inspired by her story. He said that I should never give, give up hope. He also told me that I need to rely on my friends. Well, he's not my really my friend. He's my boss. Just a guy I work with. Uh, here we go. I've really only had one really great friend in my life. Mark Sievers, my best friend in high school. He was genuine natural. One of those guys who could do almost any sport without trying. Mark was a real daredevil, too. He would jump 20 feet out of a tree or ride a motorcycle full throttle down a dirt road. Wait a second. At night, screaming like a maniac. Everybody at school loved him. They had high hopes for Mark. He was sure to get an athletic scholarship at a good college. Mark and his family moved into the house across the woods the summer before my freshman year. I was sitting in my tree fort one day when Mark climbed up through the hole in the floor. He had some dirty magazines in a joint, but I had never seen either one of those illicit things before. Mark got away with everything. People instantly liked him and trusted him. All the girls were in love with him. And he was incredibly lucky. He always won games or bets. He never lost a fight. The biggest dick. (laughs) Let me describe his penis for you in detail. Well, we're getting there. Once he actually evaded the police on his motorcycle when they tried to give him a ticket. He took off cross country and they never caught him. This exploit became one of our high school legends. I can admit now that I was jealous of him. He exuded confidence. He never seemed to struggle at anything. He always got what he wanted. But he was a great friend. Kind of guy who would never let you down. Here we are. During our junior year, Mark's family had this German exchange student. So I need to adjust him real quick. Here yep. we go. Okay, let me do that. What's up? No, it's just, uh, um, it's a it's a behind the screen thing. And them. she was beautiful, really tall, and athletic, pretty face, blonde hair, sly, sexy smile. We instantly fell in love with her. Her name was Susanna. And she exuded this powerful sexual aura. The girls at school seemed like little kids compared to her. I was so jealous that Mark had this amazing creature in his house. He told me that he could smell her when he walked by her room at night. She didn't wear any perfume. It was just the scent of her. I need a beer. I think we all do. Same. Stop. I have to mention this. I was on the side porch just now in the dark when Mrs. Randolph came to her window and stood there. I couldn't have gone inside, but I was curious. I, she knew I was watching her. She knew I was out there. And so she put on this show for me. Sort of a display. What was she trying to prove? I can't stop thinking about her amazing body. Just knowing she's in the next room is going to make things difficult. Difficult for me to sleep tonight. I can't deny that I'm... Attracted to her. I mean, I'm not dead. She's very sexy and alluring. I want to know her about her. I hope that Allison never stumbles across this. Perhaps I should password protect my stupid computer. Perhaps. Let's see. I let's see. Is that it? Yeah. Have we become a lover boy yet? I I don't know, but I think it's time <laughs> we to will never. We don't hug the shame boy enough. <laughs> yeah, we will never hug our shame boy. How, how do you know? 
I've also, seen Lola, this game. you could just you, you can click the you can click the like the, right. just the spiral thing. When you, you concluded this test, okay, you will return see. to the story. Sometimes I like <laughs> to touch myself. Sometimes I dream about <laughs> only when I think about sex. you. No At the same and time or separately? Are in... Yes. Um, <clears throat> a a wine vat? I, I love the, the, the pinch. About being dominated. Do animals <laughs> have so <laughs> in <much>? risk? <laughs> of course. She is going to kill Public domain cars. Uh. She's lonely. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> so I feel like you're lying about some of these questions slowly. You're holding back. I mean, technically. <laughs> no. This could be a scene from. Which the Bible the children's storybook. Most like to touch. The private parts. The boy kissing the, the woman doll. is. Too young. young. Most people <laughs> equate sex with death. No! Who? Not. Who does what? this? Homoerotic. The French! Should be. Yeah, Le Petit Mort. Enjoyed. Promoted. Yes! Uh. <laughs> Wait. I feel so unclean. I've been going over your. Hold on. I thought you were still sleeping. I've been going over your wife's medication, and I think that using Valium as a depressant and Secondol as a sleeping pill is overkill. Ideally, we should wean her off of all medication. It's more like a doctor's decision, don't you think? That's not how that works. That's no. a terrible idea. Dr. Turner on us, of course. Is she awake? No. She sleeps late most mornings. By the time I bring her breakfast up, she's usually awake. That's a mistake. What is? You're keeping her too comfortable and secure in her condition. We need to bring her out to a more active and self-rewarding existence. I take it you didn't always make breakfast. There's a number of things I do now that I didn't do before. Allison hasn't cooked or baked a thing since Jody. Since the accident. Your wife is desperately holding on to the past. But by you doing things that you never did before, you're helping her to create an unreal world. A world of illusion where she doesn't do the things she did before and is actually losing her grip on the past. Makes sense. I wonder why Dr. Turner never put it that way. Just trust me, please. I have a lot of experience with people in her state of mind. We need to change things, starting now. You're not intending to do anything shocking, are you? No. Just go upstairs and tell her it's time we all had breakfast. It might be too abrupt. It's not too abrupt. She'll understand that you have a stranger in the house and you want to make a good impression. The mornings are always the worst. The depression, it's overbearing. Do you want me to do it? No. I'll do it. Good. Tell her that I'd like to discuss Jody's breakfast. Go on and hug the shame boy. Hug your shame boy. You know, as you as you hug your shame boy, your lover boy comes out and says, "Turn See, me." See, that's loose. a basic instinct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. it. Pointed out in the past, the actress they got to play Catherine looks very Sharon Stone like. Also, by the way, I looked it up. Unfortunately, she is no longer with us. Oh, oh, oh. damn! Mm -hmm. Did not why, say. Why uh, did not say how in dying the article. Allison. Allison. 
There is no the nurse is down in the Only kitchen and she wall. wants breakfast. She wants to discuss Jody's breakfast with you. Jody's breakfast? I think you better handle this. Yes. Exactly how psychology works. Well, Catherine's certainly doing her job, isn't she? She seems to be having the right effect on Alison, but I'm not sure about the way she's affecting Michael. What about that bit of business under the table? Do you think she did that on purpose? Michael appears to be a little confused. I must admit, so am I. Catherine is a tease. Please don't say it like that, John Hurt. Uh, yeah. No opinion. Yes. The answer is yes. Sometimes, yeah, obviously. I I control another person with the power of false. Mind. False. No, because mm. it's gross. I have bowel problems. Prescription <laughs> drugs are always good as long as they are prescribed. I agree. By a doctor. Yeah, agree. Michael yeah. has inappropriate. Well, I guess yes. there's not fun. But yes. that's with more than one person. Never get your is... drugs from Doctor Acula. Uh, let's see. Yeah. That could be vulgar. Oh, all right. Up, oh, you're up. You're on first X. <laughs> Wait. Ah, damn it. Okay. Sucks to suck. Steal yourself. Well, we should do the tape recorder first. <laughs> yep. As I, I'm just gonna have more as of this turn. As I. They're having an obituary up in the back of my mind, my browser. <laughs> I love to watch Allison knit. She sits so still like a statue, but her hands are moving incredibly fast. It's like she's in a trance, like she's possessed by the ghost of the State Fair knitting champion. I'm walking out in the garden and the wisteria. So she didn't go with, like, I, I wonder what she could do with those hands. Whoa! Hello? Did I break this Acting thing? Talent. Uh, just killed by a ghost. A big fat bumblebee just flew into my head and I dropped the recorder. <laughs> well, I'm such I'm a okay dodo. <laughs> hmm. The recorder appears to still be working. I'm standing by an old barn watching some little birds build a nest. They're so busy. Can you hear them chirping? One of them has some golden stuff in his beak that he's weaving into the nest. It looks like hair. Now he's flying up to the house. He's going to the window of my bedroom. Oh, oh my gosh. He's taking the hair out of my brush that I left on the windowsill. Oh, how neat. They're using my hair to help build their home. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that sure. What? What? Why? <laughs> okay. I want to pick this game up and punch it and then shove Here it into a go. locker. Fuck. I slept better than I expected and woke feeling my calmer, more poised self. What a day yesterday was. The chemistry with Michael and then Allison looking so much like Colette. I'm still not over it, but now I'm more intrigued than shocked and terrible oh. at my job. Same. But yeah. Colette just never understood. For me to be intimate with someone didn't mean that I had to be monogamous. And sleeping with her didn't mean that I had to give up on men. God, we're going to ruin bisexuality and poly, poly aren't we? Yep. Just yes. going to piss all over it. I hate this. Uh, and sleeping with her didn't mean that I had to give up men. Her leaving me, though... I enjoyed her as much as anyone. I never wanted to lose her. I always wanted to be friends. It doesn't always work. I told Allison that watching a nurse take care of my mother after she'd suffered a stroke inspired me to become a nurse myself. Of course, the story isn't true, but as in the past, it helped establish a bond. A bond of lies! The truth is that I became yeah, wow. a nurse for no particular reason at all. I was just bored that I can think of, and I got into psychiatry simply because there was a job opening. Fuck! That's, that's not how that works. When but that's all changed, I turned out to be good at it. 
Very good. No, no, you're not. <laughs> and now that I'm a licensed therapist, the doors are really beginning to open. God, I was sick of following orders from those idiot doctors. The only difference between them and me is that they could afford to go to med school or they had some sweet, dedicated, naive woman just like me who put them through like I did for my ex. And every one of them felt threatened because I was smarter than they were. Except Turner. <laughs> God, no, she's fucking terrible at her job. Mm -hmm. I told you, I told you about the game, bro. There you go. I told you. Ah! Yes. <laughs> Condoms! Uh, a 35-year-old white female came to the clinic to be treated for depression. She was obsessed with collecting used... Oh, God. <laughs> and emptying them out of the jars and leaving them ah! in the fucking heater. Ah! I'm gagging! I'm gagging at this. Her fetish was extremely arousing, but it also disgusted her. Yeah! She realized that what she was doing was not normal, and this made her morose. She worked as an insurance underwriter at a big agency in, in Portland. She was a very neat, well-dressed woman. I instantly noticed her beautiful, well-manicured fingers. For several years, she had been gathering the spent prophylactics from areas of prostitutes. Oh. <laughs> she never saved condoms from her own sexual encounters, though. She kept the stranger's condoms in cigar boxes that belonged to her crib. <laughs> Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. <laughs> and sometimes it's just condom. God, I am physically gagging. A condom full of rancid jizz. <laughs> oh. 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 This is a bedroom. Oh. Again, forever you are, that dude. You are relieved for now. <laughs> oh. Reminded of that dude who just would fucking store his common bottles and then accidentally left it on the heater. <laughs> God damn it. No, he had a rainbow dash in the one that one <laughs> don't so forget gross. the most important detail that he left the <laughs> rainbow dash doll in his jar of cum okay, everyone shut up one of them he had multiple remember <laughs> okay mic's off i don't think any of these are interesting anymore but i think it's just the one oh hello this is dr turner Oh. You have reached the Chrysalis Institute. If you would like to make an appointment, please call back during business hours, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Thank you for your call, and remember, to become a butterfly, one must first be nurtured in a protective cocoon. Goodbye. That's right, Fiverr. That's... <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> John Hurt is fucking Turner. Wait, what was the joke? Oh, um, okay, no. there. Well, oh. The weird part about this is oh, you're not hitting the dial. You're dialing these numbers yourself. All right, what's this? I'll explain your reference, Lola, for those who don't get it. Uh, John Hurt was our uh, Hazel in Watership Down. Betty, I love your yep. show. It's changing my life. Thanks, Sally. How can I help? Well, I've got a little problem. That's why people call in. Uh, can you turn your radio off? We're getting feedback. Oh, sorry. Mm, that's better. Now... I'll get right to the point. My husband and I are having problems in the bedroom. Sexual problems. Yeah. Winky face. You see, Matt just doesn't know how to please me. Have you talked about it? Sure. Have you been to any kind of therapy for couples? Yes, we went for six months. Nothing worked. So your husband knows what you want, but he won't give it to you. Precisely. He thinks I'm too, uh, kinky. He has a problem with your bedroom fantasies. Yeah, uh, he's offered to do everything but that one thing, and it's driving me crazy. And the one thing is? <sighs> I can't mention it on the air. <laughs> oh, come on, Sally. It's the 90s. That's what I tell Matt all the time. Let me take a wild guess. Does your husband have a problem with oral sex? <laughs> Not at all. So what's the problem, Sally? He won't wear the rubber Nixon mask. I'm sorry, Sally. <laughs> What did you say? He won't wear the Richard Milhouse Nixon mask. He thinks it's weird. You want him to wear a Nixon mask when you make love. Yeah. And he thinks you're weird. Yeah. Isn't that silly? Sally? Yes? You need help. Okay. Not really. It's pretty tame. Yeah, that's, yeah that's I've heard tame. worse. Yeah. It's weird, but relatively speaking. Uh. Well. Time right. for Alex's journal. That's it. I will oh, shame wait. the fuck out of anyone who can only get off with a Nixon mask. 
They deserve to be shamed. Yeah. Somewhere out there, somebody got turned on by this game, and they should be shamed. <laughs> okay. Catherine told me I, I should... refuse to believe such a thing exists. Go ahead, Catherine Carmel. told me I should stop. T t uh, is that taking or oh, taking yeah, take, so take much you. medicine? Because she said that they made me too sleepy, and I need to be wide awake because Jody needs me to be alert. Alert, Catherine in the house is like having a big sister over for a visit, and not like a nurse at all. I had a funny little dream. Funny dream where I was a little girl, the same as Jody. When I woke up, I looked at my body. I was amazed how grown up my body is, and looked at myself in the mirror like I haven't seen myself, really seen myself, really seen myself since the accident. I was, and was shocked at how old. And Jody said I looked just the same, and she said she was in the prettiest, prettiest mom in the world god what a beautiful day i'm glad that michael finally listened and got a professional like Catherine come because he thought that we could take care of jody all on our own and he's just like a man to not ask someone for help with like when he had a flat tire on a country road he refused to walk across the field to that farmhouse to use their phone so that we had a big fight and jody and i had to sit in the car and wait for an hour when he walked to the gas station this is going to, I'm just, every time I see this journal, I'm afraid it's going to turn into a Charlie situation. A Charlie situation? A Flower for, Flowers for Algernon situation. Ah. Uh, I, I don't remember much of that. Uh, yeah, basically, the novel, it's a novel that starts, or short story that starts out where it's a guy um, who basically is, um, basically he's not that smart. The and next TAT will be given in. I don't get kindly. Yeah. I I I, I, nope. can't, I can't remember what the proper term is, but yeah, um, but basically, uh, it's in a journal in his own style, and it's just very, like, written like a very young child wrote it. But then he takes a medicine, and then over the point of the story, it becomes more and more sophisticated. But then it realizes that the medicine wears off, so then it just starts to. Deteriorate back Over. to yeah. All right. Nah. Let's see. Do we get the? Is there anything new in the Shame Boy corner? No, no that no. will never change. The Shame Boy is static. Uh, yeah, it's just it Mike's logs in here. Guess you could say that's yeah. kind of a real shame. Uh, also, <laughs> it's great is that this the the fucking best friend thing, high school best friend, is a running storyline throughout. Oh yes, as we'll see now. I don't know if I like the idea of Allison going off the drugs. Me too. It scares me. After the accident, the drugs are the only thing that kept Allison from having her fits. I need to call Turner and ask him what he thinks. Allison did perk up, though, when I mentioned Jody's breakfast. I guess that's a good thing. Mrs. Randolph crossed and uncrossed her legs for me. I know she knew I was watching her. I just know it. Turner must have told her that Allie and I haven't had sex since the accident. So why is she doing this to me? It isn't fair. Women don't understand how doing something like that can drive a man crazy. A little while ago, I was showing Catherine where we keep all the cleaning stuff. She brushed up against me and her breast touched my arm. It was like getting a shock. I realized, just realized Catherine reminds me of Susanna. At first, I didn't believe she and Mark were having sex. When he told me how it happened, I knew he wasn't lying. He'd been watching TV in the uh, basement. <laughs> Susanna came down in her bathrobe. She said she was having trouble sleeping. She sat next to him on the couch. He glanced over her and saw that her robe was slightly open. She was naked underneath. She knew he was looking at her, but that's what she wanted. She spread her legs a little wider and gave him a better view. He started kissing her. But then he went down on her. And she did the same for him. I imagined the scene hundreds of times. I put myself in Mark's place. Susanna with her robe opened to show her perfect breasts. Her long hair on her naked shoulders, the smell of her and the feel of her mouth and tongue. They started having sex all the time. Susanna was on the pill, so I didn't have to worry about her getting pregnant. He told me everything they did. It drove me insane with desire. Catherine and Susanna. Very few women have what they've got. That raw sexuality that puts guys like them to moths to a flame. I'm buttoning her shirt in front of me, standing in the window, uncrossing and crossing her legs, brushing up against me. What is she thinking? 
Okay, is that it? I think that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. You can do it. You're right, you can just hit the... When you've concluded, <laughs> okay. the man should be the head of the family. Around her neck, she is wearing a... That's a J-O. You know what? Never mind. <laughs> 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 that's, that's key. Pouting is a good way to get what you want. No. The figure in the shadows yes. of the room is... A ghost. The cat is thinking... Sure. That dog smells. Pet that me! Dog thing. Pet I me! To be... Oh, put a crouch in a tank. Mummified! Did Jesus Christ really exist? I'd like to no, think so. A myth. The book on the table is most likely... The Farmer's the Almanac. Farmer's Almanac. <laughs> Who is farmer's the Almanac. behind the lion? Uh, that... No, the, the lion is God, so it would have to be an angel. Angel. Just an animal trainer. Damn. It's just a fucking animal trainer. It's an God angel, damn, damn you. Boobs. Sorry, I said so right. late. Read between the lions. Yes, well, we have to get on a schedule, so it's best we start right away. Okay. You can go upstairs and get dressed, Mr. Overton. We'll call you when we're ready. We're all going to talk like well, we're being on, sensual and Michael. out of breath. All right. Heath Cliff! is really adding to the scene. What's up? Allison wants you to do that later. Why? I'm almost finished and it's supposed to rain. It would be really helpful to me if you could do it later. What possible difference could it make? Jody's trying to take a nap and you're keeping her awake. Could have just started out with that. What are you doing? Shh, little boy. I told Allison how to get Jody a sponge bath. In the beginning, it's going to be very important for me and for you to follow through and do the things we say we're going to do. I need to win her complete confidence. You understand that, can't you? Yeah, of course. After you shower and change, um, I have a list of groceries I want you to get. I'm not taking a shower until I finish cutting the lawn. Maybe you'd prefer a sponge bath. Did he just shave his entire body? Yeah, he's fucking completely smooth. I mean, I know some people just don't have chest hair. That's not a thing, but like... God, it just does not look correct for some reason. It's like an action figure that just came to life. It's probably also the video compressions, what also is doing it. Oh yeah, it's, it's hard to convey, like, that this is, the, all the compression you see is from the video itself. It's yeah. not the stream or the oh, side yeah. stream, it is their compression. It yeah. is compressed as shit. Yeah, and, and the joke is not that, you know, haha, he doesn't have chest hair, it's just he looks so bizarre. Hey, Mrs. Greenstreet. He looks I like he was molded point. from I really clay. Need to speak with Dr. Yeah. Turner for just a minute. He's with really third rate clay. Can I wait? He's got a very tight schedule. I mean, the clay was perfectly acceptable, it's just whoever made he's him just wasn't quite right all there. Immediately after this all right, what did I miss? And he's running Your cursor running. is really it's making this scene. That I see him very briefly. Is this an emergency? Uh, is your wife? Yeah, pick his nose. Nothing. No. Pick her nose. Pick her nose. Came. Pick her nose! We, we were just commenting on how smooth Mike was. No, look. It is an emergency. Like, physically really smooth, not socially. Please We've read his journals. We know what he is. Session, <laughs> I'll ask when he can see you. Thank you. That is a Walmart-ass shirt. Okay, but no. Looking at his face... 
he he kind of looks like a Walmart Steve Weber. Yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> What are you looking at? <laughs> that look from her is really good. Crazy people, am I right, folks? Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. No, I, th I think she was shaming him for staring at her. Mr. Olden insisted on <laughs> that seeing too. you. I told him you were fully booked, but he said it's an emergency. I'm sorry. It's okay, Michael. Come on in. They gotta get all their time with me. Paid a pretty penny, that. What's wrong, Michael? I'm sorry. It's it's really not an emergency. Just the only way I could get Mrs. Greenstreet to. Got a door made up stay. Hershey's. She tries to keep me on schedule. So, what's up? I mean, well, there's just about the as much chocolate right. in that door as there is in a bar of Hershey's. She, <laughs> <me>. she, <didn't. laughs> she never told me. I'm glad you. Said she was it. critical of Allison's medication. We did discuss it. But now that she's there, then I think we stand a good chance of getting Addison off some of the drugs. Then you agree with her? You don't? I didn't think she was qualified to make those decisions. But I didn't want to appear critical of her either. I understand. She is very experienced dealing with people in trauma. How does Allison feel about her? Oh, much better than I expected. That's a good thing, then. Well... I suppose. You don't like her, is that it? No, it's not that I don't like her. Has there been some kind of problem? Mm. Her methods seem unorthodox. How so? Well, she's very authoritarian, for one thing. She's virtually bossing me around in my own house. <laughs> yes. Catherine is used to a lot of responsibility. <clears throat> she was a head nurse at a very young age. She is extremely intelligent, you know. Although her name is Mrs. Randolph, I get the feeling she no longer has a husband. Divorced quite recently. Ah. Guess she's better at solving other people's problems than her own. The failure of a partnership should not be a condemnation of the people involved, Michael. Sometimes, things are just not meant to be. Of course. I don't know why I said that. Is there anything else? Because you're an asshole. Yes, the most important point. Yeah, yeah I thought that was obvious. Yeah. She seems to be humoring Allison too much. Humoring her? Yeah, I guess I expected her to be dealing in reality, but she just seems to be fostering the illusion. I mean, I just think she's going about it all wrong. Well, she is very experienced at this sort of thing. You've been dealing with Allison's condition for what? Six months now? Yes, just over. She has an enormous task, you know. And a major step would be for her to gain Allison's trust. Hmm. That's what she says. <laughs> well, she's not lying. No, I'm sure she isn't. I guess you think it's dumb for me to be so worried. Oh, of course not. But you must try not to feel so anxious. We're watching the situation very closely. Right. Stand by, ready. Good well, luck. Well, thanks for your. Oh, time. thank you for the host. A raid. I am Strange so sorry that this is what you're rating. I thought I handled it rather well, though, don't you? I mean, oh, I uh, see. If I knew oh. now, you know what? Never mind. Would, uh, given the circumstances, <laughs> this is perfect. My responses to this is perfect. Were, um, well, appropriate. I mean, personally, <laughs> stuff at all. I wouldn't say I love this game. I just have agree? a sick obsession with it. <laughs> I, I like, appreciate like trash I appreciate anyone that has a, any mode of John Hurt. <laughs> wow. This, it's, it's so terrible. <laughs> she's very intelligent. I'm sure she's good what at her job. Does Allison feel most strongly toward Michael? Let's see. 
Um, let's see. But Axe, what were you gonna say? Uh, what was it? Oh, I was just gonna say you have you have a thing for trash. It's true. That's why let's I'm say, here. Let's I mean, I know I know your your anime preferences. So I could def definitively say that. First off, how dare you? Mike is the kind of person who has <laughs> a short fuse. Her. Agreed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he has a short fuse. All the crap he's put up with. No. The Allison? No. no. Well, I mean, it depends upon how you describe a short fuse, Rafferty. I'll give you that. How do That's you it. feel? In he's well, he's definitely starting to act out. People. Um, let's see. Uh, let's say stimulated. Catherine's oh methods definitely seem unorthodox. <laughs> Why are you here then? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yes, of course yeah. they are. Yeah, her, her methods are fucking terrible. That's okay. literally her entire oh, we're selling here. point. Oh, get to click the TV. Oh no. <laughs> oh god, just, yeah, the TV. Is that's that right. the TV? Stick around, folks, because we're, we're we're also reading out some of the stuff. Oh, hold on. Where's, where's the TV? Is this the TV? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Click that. Yeah, they used to have tubes. Remember? The young psychiatrist learns. Oh, that's my cursor. Which will be at his disposal. And how do? Oh no, that's your cursor. Among these are such yes, it's, it's Lowe's cursor. My cursor is on the No, because it's so big. Oh, I will throw you off the internet, Lolo. <laughs> Look at the size of Lolo's cursor. <laughs> oh, does that make you feel sexy? No, actually, it makes me feel uh, <laughs> inferior. <laughs> yep, I we... could not be more flaccid now, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, we're taking the look and it's for Valentine's Day, because... Oh no, my dick is retracted into my body. <laughs> <laughs> my dick is shrieking as it curls back into my body, never to return again. <sighs> Made a really good slide whistle noise, too, when it happened. <laughs> is this a like lobotomy video? Um... <laughs> Why? What the fuck yeah! is going on? <laughs> I hate the chat right now. <laughs> Do we just step into a clock? Thank you for following. <laughs> oh, God. Every time. I mean, same. Is this Freddy all. Page? I don't know. I don't think so. God, you know what? The scenes really, from Eraserhead uh, goes on. I forgot how long this <laughs> yeah. went on for. The scenes from Eraserhead were sexier than this game. I, uh, I mean, also like how long? I don't know how long ago it is. We we did uh, Phantasmagoria two, which also goes into places. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so like, I think the reason this hasn't been banned, technically speaking, is a nobody cares. First <laughs> off. Yeah, that also does. That also helps. And B, this isn't strictly pornographic. And yeah, this game is incredibly unsexy in how horny it is. Like, you have to really reach hard to get turned on by this. That's so bad. So to speak. Let's see. Okay, who wants to read? I no. got better things to do. No. I haven't read anything yet. Do you want me to read? Okay. It, sure. Sure. All right. Starting from where? Uh, Go from the, the first page. Probably. And then move on. Yep. Okay, we can do here. Okay, yes. Post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, and learned helplessness. Rehabilitation strategies by Megan Johnson and Peter Weasel, MSW. Learned helplessness. <laughs> Withdrawal, regression, and denial and trauma. The scientific literature suggests antecedent factors such as marital conflict, unresolved family issues, lack of strong supportive network of friends, and excessive reliance on prescriptive medication place some patients at a higher risk in resisting treatment. Disassociative symptoms and flashbacks to the trauma are not effectively dealt with, and suicidal preoccupation with suicidal impulses are ever present in the patient's consciousness. At the same time, the tendency to resist outside support and or intervention is strong. Self-mutilating behaviors, just cutting the skin with razor blades or puncturing the skin with sharp instruments, become a substitute when the patient lacks the mobilization or the resources to kill themselves. It is one of the ways the patient tries to tolerate the lack of emotional control that occurs as traumatic memories unfold. <coughs> Excuse me, this is all bullshit. I'm about to throw my chili <laughs> yeah. against the wall and um, fucking scream. I know. 
until the patient can safely explore specific aspects of the trauma with the critical incident psychotherapist, <laughs> these patients remain a danger to themselves and others. Thank you. I was about to say the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah. Behold. <laughs> Sunday, 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 Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I just love how fucking you can use all your medication, but you only need the edge. <laughs> um. <laughs> Thank you for following. <laughs> when self injury no longer has a desired effect, their actions may become lethal, i.e., self destruction, or in some cases, attacking others, including those in the helping profession, with homicidal intent. <laughs> Dun, dun. <laughs> oh, you got more. What? <laughs> <laughs> it keeps going. Uh, <laughs> God, I'm killing everybody. What <laughs> common techniques include mood monitoring, rapport building, and management of specific symptom expression of the patient. Somewhat common therapeutic interventions have also proven effective, although still experimental in nature. The use of expressive art, meditation, massage, and naturopathy oh, I guess it's that's that, that that's one of the we're moving on uh, including dietary modification have decreased the patient's resistant attitude towards processing the intolerable anxiety associated with traumatic memory one of the most extreme strategies of recreating the traumatic setting with actual props and persons present that the tragedy has less inconclusive results okay this is undermining what's going to come never mind much like the um, implosive therapies and forms of shock therapies used for phobias the experience of the patient is a sink or swim phenomenon when the rehabilitation specialist has exhibited strong uh, so established strong rapport with the patient and approach using the gradual introduction and recreation of events leading up to the trauma they provide a fruitful beginning for the specialist oh the this is wrong can, can then have some gauge as how the patient is responding and coping the of the staged theater the therapist is bringing to the patient the therapist directs the play often in collaboration with the patient who in their own verbal state may be drawn in to assist in making the illusion as real as possible many patients with traumatic memories already have residual rituals that they've been secretly playing out behind the backs of other survivors it's up to the therapist to direct the flow in recreating the trauma. They may experience greater resistance by other survivors who have sought to bury all the residual emotion currents of the trauma with the dead. I Just the way you were phrasing that, I was somehow expecting the words challenge pissing to magically appear. <laughs> oh my thing. god. <laughs> I can't Bill believe they have natural passing in here. Wild Bill Hill psychiatric Oh, uh, fucking naturopathy. <laughs> uh, I'm you're coming up to my pills this weekend. You're a big enough schmuck to have depression. <laughs> You'd be less depressed if you Just got more shoot up some B12 and, and watch the depression okay. swap away. Okay, to the map. Okay, yep. Well, there's, more, there's more in the like, though. That's going to be oh, no. My body cannot handle more. That was so bad. That was just, Oh, this... all of this. It's almost like oh. it has no clue how psychiatry works. It is fucking pure quackery, it's right. I don't know about you, but I think this situation isn't good. Not good at all. I think it's real it fucked up. <laughs> Mrs. Overton really doesn't need her husband undermining her therapy. That poor woman. Not that I think Mrs. Randolph is the Florence Nightingale of psychiatric care. But she is a professional psychotherapist, and Dr. I mean, is Torn's Nightingale is really who you ever want to be compared to anyway? Perhaps no. remember, she was, she was Jack the Ripper, you see. She was really good well, with charts. Is that a fucking fate away. reference? Not this time, actually. Eye, okay. Will you? So it's still an anime reference. I was going to have a conniption fit. Nurse -turned therapist. Is that a JoJo reference? She's a bit too no, that's a, her a, a just a... If you ask. No, no, no. Fate Forms Nightingale is solving the problem at any cost. Okay, let's see. What do we got? Wait, did this secretary just shit talk everyone? <laughs> yes, yes. That's yes. exactly what she did. Okay, let's see. What's let's what good thing? She's the only be... sane person here. Fuck all of them. Okay, let's see. Oh no. Oh no. This can't be good. Uh, is, uh, I'll is, do it. Is, is this any worth reading? Let's we'll find out. Go for it. Objective: uh, 26 year old married parent of a five year old girl came in requesting a prescriptive medicine for depression. 
states that she has periodically suffered from depression since adolescence, describes a childhood with parents battering each other and the children during alcoholic binges, left home at 16 years of age to live with an aunt in San Francisco, received the high school equivalency diploma, attended community college and completed a program in medical record keeping and computer technology, moved to Rogue Valley in 1991 with her husband, Brandon Carter, has periodically worked in community hospitals and numerous medical clinics in the Valley. Married seven years with one daughter, Caitlin, claims her life would be without meaning if anything happened to my baby. Describes many medical emergencies he had the child since birth, including chronic and severe ear infections, intestinal disorders of unknown origin, and breathing irregularities. States her husband does not provide enough emotional support in parenting her daughter. Current functioning. Mrs. Carter's distress appears to be situationally induced by obsessive concern with her husband's health and safety and by her husband's lack of attention and long working hours away from home. It became offensive when I suggested an effective means for reducing stress. In addition to prescriptive medicine, was making greater effort to include her husband in parenting Caitlin. This in turn would give her a chance to get a life for herself. Suggested that her per husband's periodic excessive use of alcohol created distrust, and his workaholic tendencies mitigated against him having much investment in family decision-making and participation in dealing with the daughter's many medical problems. Immediate treatment goals. Return an appointment in two weeks. Recommended marriage counseling with clinical psychologist. Suggested I be willing to work with her around her daughter's illnesses. Further advised entrusting her daughter to a single pediatrician rather than a physician. Hopping to hospitals and medical clinics throughout the valley. A consistent medical plan to strengthen her daughter's health appears to be lacking. Mother may need education about typical childhood illnesses and encouragement around her ability to care for her child in a non-crisis mode. Symptomatic patterns in diagnostic justification. Pattern of daily or almost daily depression for over two years, poor appetite, fatigue, periods of hyperinsomnia, insomnia, difficulties in concentration, no manic episodes reported. Let's see. Yep. Let's see. Oh. Okay. No show. Okay. Also, yeah, this is oh. highly illegal what we're doing. Yeah, this I was is to say, do, yeah. do, do we, do we need to go through? Violent. No. So I'm going to yeah. let you in on a secret. We don't come here that much. Yeah. Is, is any of this, like, funny wait, 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 or go, interesting? Wait, go back there for a second. Yeah, that's... I. Okay, so, so Axe, you ask a valid question, and my answer to that is, what part of this game has been funny or interesting? Okay, we've made it funny or interesting. Is it something we can make funny or interesting? Yes or no? We're literally just sorting through this man's patient files, which is yeah. highly illegal. It is. Yeah. Although, although, I guess we can make the argument that the player character doesn't technically exist. We, no, we do. People we, address we us. Do. People talk to yes. us. Right, but we're, yeah. we're doing this as sort of like a... Oh, God. How, I don't think there's a term for this, but like we're in the past, but we're not technically in the past. No, we're viewing the past. It's weird. It's weird what we're doing, and it doesn't make sense. Right. So technically, it's technically not... Munchausen oh, good. By... Munchausen by proxy. That's, that's no. I, there was more to it. There was more to it. It didn't look like it. I think it was just a front page. I thought I saw thought it. Read... Yeah, there's oh, there's. Oh, there is. Okay. Okay. Oh God. Wait. See how long? How long this is before we try to? Read. A long while. Okay. Let's, let's... Three pages. Okay. You on this? I'm looking over it to see if it's worth reading. Probably not. No, this it's is just a straight. This is just like a. Yep. This might actually be the most accurate thing they've written so far. Okay. It actually looks like they fucking photocopied a fucking uh, medical when you journal with that this one. Test, yeah. You will return right. to the story. Okay, let's let's continue Do on. Do you wish to proceed? Bugs are oh, best described as icky. Yes. 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 I Riddle. laugh out loud for no good reason. Not, and then feel like a fool. Not really. So I don't feel like a fool <laughs> because I find it funny that this other people are comfortable with it. <laughs> it reminds me of Fantastic Planet. Art should Look, Axe, all I'm saying is one time I was walking out from Botox and yeah. I hadn't wiped my head forehead well enough. Uh -huh. So there's blood running down my forehead. <laughs> uh, and as I'm leaving the building, I just start cackling like an idiot and the lady next to me gives me uh, this terrified <laughs> look. I, it's worse than none of the above option. 
because this is the kind of person I am, X. Let's go disturb. (laughs) I'm genuinely picturing you with blood streaming down your face, cackling like an idiot. That is beautiful. I've never been afraid of clowns. Clowns are fucking terrifying. Should all be no creepy clowns are creepy. That's no, no, that's gross. Makes me think of that. Looks none of the above. That does not look like me. Fuck off, game. Artist who painted this. Uh, I, like has some issues to deal with. As a unique vision. One of my favorite to answers. Hit an animal on purpose with my car. True. Just true. 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 I go out of my way to avoid them. Yes, I've almost gotten into accidents because I tried. Yeah, to because that's a good Same. way to destroy your car. Also, oh, my brother crashed his car trying to avoid a skunk. I. Actually, last oh week God. almost ran into oh a deer, God. so that was fun. So I actually on? cried when I ran over a squirrel. What about Jody? She's sitting up. She's sitting up in bed. Really? Yes. Catherine got her to do it. We were just talking about how she needed to try harder, and Catherine said she should be sitting up in bed. And she went right She's upstairs. Really reading that and got card behind it. him. Just like that. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wonderful. And that's not all. You gotta do it. No, they, they have all the actors run a half mile before sure. <laughs> With full pack. It's how they get them all breathy and everything. Catherine wants her own television Yes. You mean to tell me that not everybody no, talks? No, no, Jody. Oh, Jody like this? All the time? Television. She's sitting up now and she wants her own television like set. They're fucking winded every second oh, of the look. day. It just came out of the sun. Why be more excited and happy? They have a sa- Why do they have a sauna? Such a surprise. <laughs> Come on, they're rich and white. Why would they not have a fucking sauna? That woman I don't even, are they rich? I don't know if they're rich. You Look at their house. Well, Catherine, yeah, no, also they live in the middle of fucking nowhere. You will do it. Once yeah. Yes. You will get her own television set. That's what she wants. Is she getting horny now? She does. First, I gotta get. No, she's actually. Let me help. No, that's okay. I got the it. sexiest thing he's ever I'm said. <laughs> well, like her entire libido is weirdly conditional. That minx. That's it. I mean, look at this house. You can't tell me they don't have money. I mean, it depends well, on the area his they're dad in. Dad had money. Yeah, his dad. He's he inherited the house from his dad. From... Well, so, it still has the money. One hour every day. Sure. Actually, he Watch hasn't worked in a while. Yeah. Well, it sounds really like he's working from really home. abundantly clear My what God. he does for a job. Whatever she's yeah, doing, she's about hugging his shame boy. Good question. What does everyone think his job is? Oh, well, I thought it was like well. an architect. No, 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 no. no that's What's fucking heavy that? rain, dude. Look, at <laughs> Look, these are starting to blur together. <laughs> I, 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 is he a writer? <laughs> Carrot cake. With no, no, he has underline. a boss. No, like an actual boss. Who you can have a boss as a writer. Stuff your editor. Yeah. True, but that's usually your editor. Yes, like, they wouldn't call him. Soy milk, for Christ's sake. I'm gonna stick he with He specifically architect. refers to his boss, who's letting him time, take I'm time off. off. Yeah, I, six I, months time off. Yeah, I mean, people were doing remote jobs from the, at this time point. Yeah, but friend. he's specifically not working. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'll stick with architect. That's my answer. Because, like, even his boss, will, like, eventually he'll say, Oh, I can start doing my job again. I seem to remember. call his boss, who's let him on leave for six fucking months. I seem to remember <laughs> this part, and it getting. It, this is the part where it starts to get really dumb. Just now. And yeah. Report- well, now? I mean, like, it's getting. It's going well, downhill. Wants she wants to know all about Jody so she can work with her better. For crying out loud, Allison. I don't know where those things are. They're in the bottom two drawers of her dresser. Could you please... No, this is America. This is Oregon. Yeah, Oregon. Well, granted, Oregon's not a right-to-work state, so... True. But also, six months' time off. I'm pretty sure all states are right-to-work. What are you talking about? No. No. I just didn't know that she understood you so well. Right-to-work is, like, a more recent thing, actually. Oh. Specifically southwest Oregon, because they're near the Rogue River. Must be th- oh no, I'm thinking of the other thing where like all the states Look, have uh, laws stairs, where like a employer can fire you for any for any reason. No big deal. That's at will. Yeah, at will. That's the that's, that's the one. I knew it was one of those two things. Think. Yeah, it's his boss. It's it's just 
this weird situation. Like, I wonder how important he is or how much he earns at his job that he can take six months off. And his boss is like, yeah, you can come back on whenever, sure. It's like the highest paid person, so the more time he takes off, the more money they save. Essentially. Oh God! See, this God, is why. Yeah, this, right. this is why I remember it getting. No, no, shut up, Max. This is perfect. Cause it gets better. Put that fucking cursor away, Lolo. Touch his nose. Touch his nose. Poke, poke is the poke the buttons. Poke, poke the button. Boop, Todd Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's just in this lighting, I really see it. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> see that therapist? You can fuck her. Uh. <laughs> oh God, this music is so good. Is that a card? No, it's memories. You'll see. So, X. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh huh. Guess who was dead this whole time? She's been dead the whole time. What a twist! I already. I called that. Yeah, I was just, Everyone uh, calls it. It's obvious. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought that was like part of like the. No, it's supposed to be this twist. Like, actually, Jody was dead the entire time. Well, I figured it out when he said that uh, the doctor is feeding her nope. delusion. And it's like, yeah, no, the kid's I dead. I've worked with patients in severe denial before, but never anyone who's suffered to the same extreme as Allison. And that's actually why I introduced Catherine. No, they only hint at it as if it's supposed to be some kind of big secret. Virtually her first case. John Hurt walks into the scene and just goes, Denial. It's not just a river in Egypt. <laughs> and walks out of the scene. <laughs> and Catherine's effect was remarkable. I was somewhat removed from You know, the they paid me a lot of money. <laughs> don't really know how she did it. But I saw Danny in his uh, before and after conditions. And the results were astonishing. She's good. She's very good. Whoop. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. What? Oh, God. He's turned to the girl from the ring. Be both passive and sexy. What, what does that yes. mean? Yes. What does that mean? Yes. It is a, those are Who words, was but... The car when it ran into the tree? Say uh, it so. was me. I was driving the car. <laughs> I am it was Alice. Fuck them all. Alternative. False. Did you think that Jody was still alive? <laughs> no, because I've seen no. this game before. No. It's I have dabbled in bizarre obvious. sexual acts. <laughs> Only on weekends. <laughs> Why would you ask Sometimes that question right after <laughs> asking if a child was <laughs> dead? I think these are randomized. I think the order is randomized. Um, no, they aren't. They I, aren't. I don't. <laughs> That's the thing. They are disgusting. Swearing offends me. Fuck no. no. Is Catherine Fucking no. attracted to Michael? I mean, yes. It, yes, yes. She said, as much. said it. She literally says it out loud, and that's one of my favorite parts about that question. <laughs> Let's stare into the toilet of wonder and see what. What? <laughs> Why? Reading material for the toilet. Ah, the nipple pinch. So you can shit and jacket at the same time. <laughs> Ye oldy nipple pinch. <laughs> It's a very coy pinch. You don't want to push too hard. You just want to go... <laughs> oh, God. All right. The second level of voyeurism is the artist himself. He watches from the length of a paintbrush as bodies take shape, unveiled and uninhibited. With a few short, colorful strokes, he unlocks doors, uncovers beds, dresses, or undresses. See what I did there? People around him, putting them in positions they might never imagine themselves. Such is the case with Gabrielle d'Estrée and the Duchesse de Villar. I'm sure I butchered that. In this portrait, two noblewomen are captured bathing together, looking stately and jeweled and regal, even in their nudity. What? What do you mean even? Even as one, <laughs> even as one delicately tweaks the nipple of the other. Just a little teeny <laughs> <bit> cluster. <laughs> 
styling into Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> It is a vision, beautiful, absurd, that the artist has seen within himself. It is his window into himself. He gazes at the two women with emotions we can only guess. The woman doing needlework in the background doesn't look up. The two ladies in the foreground look their voyeuristic creator in the eye. This is just silly. Unless I airs, well, don't be cruel... To one heart is true. The artist peeks inside the boudoir to find a little play in a couple's reversal of roles. The gentleman seems shy, while his lady seems determined to get what she wants. His legs are stiffly together. Hers are splayed, pushing his apart. His hand gently restrains hers. She lifts his skirt anyway. Despite the privacy of the moment, the artist cannot look away. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Erotic! <laughs> Just in the most Zap Brannigan voice, erotic! <sighs> erotic! Erotic. Okay, well, let's see if you Pure, unadulterated eroticism. Did you just develop a monocle there? I don't know what happened. <laughs> we have Pat on the line. Uh, Hello, Dr. Betty. Oh, Hi, Pat. What's on your mind? My husband doesn't want me anymore. Do you know why? He doesn't find me attractive. Why not? I don't know. Is there something wrong with you? I don't think so. Your husband just all of a sudden stopped being attracted to you. Yes. You don't have sex anymore? Not for two years. And I can't figure it out. I never felt unattractive before. But now I'm starting to feel like maybe I am ugly. That maybe I've been deluding myself all of my life. Maybe when people said that I was beautiful, they were just being nice. What do you look like? What do you mean? Describe yourself. Well, I'm... I'm very tall. About 5'10". And I have long, blonde hair. I have very high cheekbones. Uh... My body is shapely. I have a 36, 24, 36 figure. A lot of men tell me I look like that Italian actress, um, Sophia Loren. Well, Pat, it sounds like your husband needs a healthy dose of testosterone if he can't manage to have sex with somebody who looks like you. Oh, he's having sex. With whom? With mom. Your husband is having sex with your mother? For the past two years. How long have you known this? I just found out last week. I went over to Mom's house to help her change her sheets. You help your mother change her sheets? Yeah. She has trouble getting around, doing housework. You see, she weighs 600 pounds. 600 pounds? She's very big boned. And she's pushing 68. She's 68 years old? Anyway, I was looking under the bed, and I found a box of letters. Love letters from George to Mom. Very lewd love letters. Well, it's pretty simple, Pat. Your husband is a geriatric obesophile. A what -a -file? He likes porking fat old women. Well... What can I do to get him back? You want him back? Are you nuts? This guy is screwing your mother. But I love him. Well, you better start feeding your face because that's the only way you're going to get him back. So go out and get a bag of potato chips, Pat. I'm Dr. Betty. I hate this game. The yeah. worst advice <laughs> possible. <Right. laughs> well. Holy shit! <laughs> Kay. I don't think I could hate this anymore. Holy fucking shit! Oh, don't worry, Axe. This game will always top itself. Yeah, it, it. Don't worry. We're still going places. Also, obesophile? Fuck off! I'm pretty sure. Geriatro obesophile. Ah! Well, carnival. <laughs> Sorry, I had to sip away for a second.
Jody sat up in bed. What a miracle. Catherine is amazing. That funny, unfocused look has gone from Jody's eyes and her old sparkle is coming back. So I asked Michael to bring up a TV from for her, and he laughed and said, My God, why didn't I think of that before? You want to go out and... You want to go out oh. and... Buy a brand new a TV. Brand new TV. I, but I told him... But the old one would just be fine for now. Michael and Catherine are getting along famously. Michael joked about adding on a room for her. The strange feeling came again today. Something bad is going to happen to Jody, and it scares me so much that I have to sit down, actually. I have to lie down, curl up, and cover my head, feeling... And the feeling terrifies me like it's the world turns into a nightmare, like I can't tell the difference between what's real and what isn't. Then I start to cry, and then... And I can't help it. I start to cry. I think the reason I cry is that I'm happy she's getting better, but every day I feel the feeling scares me. I want the feeling to go away. So I, I guess what it's trying to get at is that she knows year. that it's a delusion, but she doesn't want to admit that it's a delusion. Yeah. Something like that. Your turn, Max. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Unless you want me to take this and you can read Michael's bullshit. Oh god, I don't know. They're Something both pretty very rank. interesting happened today. Oh, we're still going on that storyline. We were making too. dinner and Allison cut her finger while chopping oh, vegetables. Hit the big part too. It was a bad cut, but she just quietly stared with fascination at the blood dripping out of the wound. I overcame my urge to bind the finger because I knew something important was happening. I figured she was having a flashback to the accident. I wonder what somebody would have said if they had just seen me watching her bleed like that, but I couldn't interrupt it, though. I had to see where it would lead. After about a minute, it seemed a lot longer. She started to tremble uncontrollably. And that's when I stepped in and washed and bound the wound. Allison didn't say a word for a couple of hours. She sat at the kitchen table, staring into space. It reminded me of when we went bike riding that one time and you flew over the handlebars and landed on your palms in the gravel and you just sat there plucking the stones from your bloody hands with the serene, rapt expression on your face. You told me that you loved things like that because, because they made you feel so alive. I wonder if Allison was thinking about life or death. See, what makes me so angry about that is that she's recording on tape to send it to a transcription service for the for the doctor's notes later. This shouldn't just be her stream of consciousness poetry. No, this would actually get her fucking thrown in jail. Mm -hmm. And also yeah. erotic, because now we're talking. I don't, before I read this, the fact that she's fucking talking about how she literally sat and watched her patient bleed. Yeah. What the fuck? Okay. Terrible sadness permeates this house. It would be easy, living here, to get sucked into it. I frequently need to visualize myself showering away the sadness and watching it swirl away down the drain. While Michael and Allison have, each in their own ways, struggled to cope with what happened to Jody, a distance has ripped open between them. Allison harbors a great deal of hostility toward Michael. It's so all-encompassing, so overwhelming that she doesn't even recognize it, let alone understand it. Her affection for me may just be a byproduct of her anger with him. I see it in her eyes. I hear it in her voice when she speaks to him. She told me that she and Michael haven't been having sex. I was surprised that she revealed so much so soon. It's a sign that she trusts me, and I'm going to ruin it completely. Michael's lack of sex might explain something about the attraction between us. When he came in from mowing the lawn, I could feel the heat pouring off his naked chest. He smelled so good, like grass and dirt. He tries to deny Allison's anger, but it's clear that he feels it on some level. Can't help but feel it. He's in a lot of pain. He suffers almost as much as Allison does, maybe more. Michael wants his wife back. All of her. I know exactly how he feels. I want all of his wife back, too. 
My principal responsibility here is Allison, but I'm going to do what I can to help them both return to help them both return them to each other as whole and healthy human beings. They both need me as much as I need this case. The advantage of this live-in therapy arrangement is that it allows me to use whatever tools of healing I choose rather than just the ones prescribed by those narrow-minded drug pushers that call them so good. Uh, so good. Oh, so good. I just got off the phone with Turner. Apparently, Michael's complained about me. It sounds as if Turner handled it well. Still, though, I'm going to have to find more effective means of dealing with Michael. I do want to help him if he'll let me. But if he won't, I simply can't allow him to interfere with my work with Allison. I really enjoyed working with Allison today. We spent a long time talking about Jody. And... I tended to, to some of the basics Allison's been neglecting since the accident. I'm drinking some water real quick. Drown in it. Uh, I wish. I helped her groom herself and brushed and fixed her hair for her. Did, what, did you pick nits out of her hair? I couldn't help but think of Colette as I did that, picking nits out of her hair too. About the time we bathed each other, washed and combed each other's hair. <laughs> It just sounds like a sleepover. It's basically what it is. <laughs> we just sat and coped each other. I mean, what kind of sleepover are we talking about? <laughs> well, you'll see in a minute. It's the next sentence. Give him the old circle brush. <laughs> about how afterward Colette had laid me talk oh, right away, laid me down my bare back to the hardwood floor and taken away the towel. She asked me to stretch my arms straight. Next. There we go. Up. And to bring my hands together so my fingertips pressed against each other. Between each pair of fingertips, she inserted a marble. What? My task, she said, was not to allow the marbles to drop, no matter where or how she touched me. She said if one marble dropped, she'd stop. It's like an even dropped all of them immediately. <laughs> it's like an even shittier Fifty Shades of Grey. I think I'll meditate. I could use a little relaxation. I'd like to get Allison do it. Fifty, ba Fifty Shades of Beige. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, we... we're done here. No, you're not. Nope. No, we're not. Gotta do promiscuous <laughs> girl. <laughs> God damn it, promiscuous girl. A teenage girl was brought to the clinic by her parents for promiscuity. <laughs> she was 14 and already experienced by her own count 806 <laughs> partners! <gasps> Fucking what? Uh, yeah, I think in my show we ran the numbers on this and it is completely <laughs> fucking insane. It's nonsense. 806? 800 no, sexual. Just straight up 800. Flat. Even. In a row. Wow. <laughs> Basically, in the entire county. <laughs> very long train they no, ran. No, 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 no. That's a Greg Clark's <laughs> reference. Thank you. Uh, uh, the patient kept track of these encounters in a notebook. That's how the parents found out what was going on. She met the men at bars or public restrooms. In the notebook, she recorded meticulous details of the sexual acts. Fourteen. <laughs> 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 For example, the size and shape of the man's penis, the time it took him to ejaculate, etc. Maybe she was just doing a science experiment, I don't know. The patient took absolutely no pleasure. Okay. So I know, you, I know. You say that, but she would have had to have been at least 11 uh, when she started. Uh, <laughs> I hate this, Lolo. Why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the patient took right. absolutely no pleasure. Nope. Okay, that's fine. No, yep. no, we're no, it took absolutely no pleasure Your from sign. it. Just like us. Again. Okay. The least to wrote... study. Time for death. We wrote the yeah. check. Yeah, it's time for my whipping. <laughs> we wrote I don't know what Max had theirs. I, we wrote a check, and we now we have to cash it. Oh, no. I'm cashing it. Okay, I'm... Mike is too vanilla to even think of whipping. I'm spitting all over Just the Just the mere idea of whipping is here. You go. Mike. <laughs> Rest in peace. Allison and I met in college in our senior year. We were instantly attracted to each other, and the sex was fantastic. After a month, we knew we were in love. 
She was so much fun back then. So full of life. We loved going on road trips, especially to the ocean. We never talked about marriage, but we were always saying stuff like, when we have kids, or when we have a house. One night, after incredible sex, Allison started crying. She told me that she was worried that all I wanted her for was sex. I wonder why. I told her that it was stupid, so she said she didn't want to sleep with me for a while. First, I was okay with the whole thing, but after a month, I wondered what the hell was going on. I was incredibly frustrated. We started arguing a lot, and all of a sudden, we were on the verge of splitting up. Allison had a roommate named Tracy, a friend of hers from high school. She was a hippie chick with tattoos and a fierce belly button. She was very pretty, and she had an amazing body. She was always throwing with me. One night, Tracy and I got really drunk and ended up in bed. The sex was great. I wanted to do it again. Tracy felt guilty, though. She thought she had betrayed her friend. He did. The next day, Allison came over. She said that Tracy had told her what had happened. The weird thing was, Allison didn't seem mad. In fact, she was apologetic. She told me that it was, everything was her fault, and that she wanted to start sleeping together again. She started crying. We made love that afternoon. A couple of weeks later, I found something really bizarre. Tracy told me that Allison had encouraged her to have sex with me. She had told Tracy that she didn't care about me anymore. It was only after she found out that we had sex that she wanted me back. <sighs> Turner was no help. He thinks I should just go along with what Catherine says. I think that Mrs. Randolph is insecure, and she feels that she needs to boss me around all the time to show me that she's in control of the situation. I didn't tell Turner what I really felt. He's very defensive of her, like she's his kid. Or his girlfriend. The whole situation is starting to sort of piss me off. But I promise myself I'll do anything. Just as long as it helps Allie. Is it helping her? She just seems to be sinking deeper and deeper into her fancy world. And Mrs. Randolph is the one who's pushing her. Turner told me that Mrs. Randolph is divorced. I'm not surprised. Mrs. Greenseat knew I was looking at that nymphette's ass in Dr. Turner's office. That was really embarrassing. Yeah, that girl exuded sex, though, and she wanted me to look at her. I wonder what kind of therapy old Dr. Turner's giving her. I'll bet he doesn't mind seeing her three times a week. <sighs> the child, you fucking creep. I stopped by the office and said hi to everyone. Leon wasn't there, but everyone else was very happy to see me. Duncan asked me if I wanted to play tennis sometime. I told him that would be great. Then I went to the hippie dippy food co-op and bought 50 bucks worth of health food crap. On the way home, I started off at the driving range and blasted some balls to the fence. Man, that felt good. I dread going to bed. Allison sleeps so rigidly, like a corpse. I want to run from the house, run away from them. I'm going out to the porch and drink a few beers. It's starting to rain. Jesus Christ. I just woke up from the scarecrow dream. I can't sleep. Fifteen minutes passed while I just sat there, staring to space. I can't stop thinking about Mark. Or maybe it's Susanna I'm dwelling on. It was Susanna's birthday party, and everyone had forgotten to get ice cream for the cake. Mark volunteered to run to the store. He got hit by a drunk driver as he drove home. He was in a coma. The doctor didn't know if he would ever come out of it. Susanna and I were alone in the hospital with him. I had my arm around her, holding her close. My face was touching hers. We were both overwhelmed by what happened. Yes, I know. We were scared, shocked, and anguished. I could feel her hot tears rolling down my cheeks. I licked my lips and tasted her tears. And then the strangest thing happened. Something about the feel and taste of her sense was this powerful, electric sensation rushing through my body. I held Susanna closer to me. She must have felt it too because she opened her eyes wide and stared at me. All these emotions, sorrow and lust, loss Turn and gain, the took them and mingled together and pulled us <laughs> together like a spell. <clears throat> we started kissing passionately touching each other's bodies, surprised and thrilled by our unexpected desire. Susanna led me to a spare bed in the room, and we made love while my best friend lay dying. That's right, everyone. Yup. This, this dude would come while his best friend was cla was Dude nutted in this guy's fucking friend with benefits while he was dying. Yes. And later that night, I had the scarecrow dream for the first time. Oh, God, the the same dream I had dream. tonight. In the dream, I'm walking through the house in the daytime. Nobody's home. Everything is so quiet and still. I look outside toward the pasture. I see a scarecrow hanging limp across its wooden cross. I walk outside. Across the field. Closer I get to the scarecrow, the more scared I get. The scarecrow looks like a person. A man. I can't see his face. I stop an arm's length away. 
An old straw hat covers the man's features. I stare at his hands, nailed to the old boards. The blood is dried and caked on. Suddenly, the man twitches. I stumble backwards and fall on the ground. The scarecrow turns his head slowly and looks. Toward the sky. It's his eyes are sunken. His skin is cracked from exposure. I can still recognize who it is. It was my face. It is me. So yeah. <laughs> Got two horror stories for the price of one. So they turned a They Might Be Giant song into an erotic thriller? Yes. <laughs> Wait, I, what? That's a reference to it. They might be giant so There's I, a scarecrow that moves its arms and does a parody of each impossible thing you do. When you turn around to look, it's gone behind you. On its face, it's wearing your expression where your eyes don't go. But that's also that's also a scary story to tell in the dark by Elvin Schwartz, the Tarold. I, I, the, the I, also, I, I, I'm clicking the swirly. When you yes, concluded please all do. Tests, but yeah, so okay. also what there's a the real quick figure most remind you of. A Chinese character. Uh, real quick. When I was a child, John Hurt a boning of... his patient thing is this weird thing they talk about in these side yeah. parts, but is never touched on in the main thing. Uh, let's see. That, yeah. I, it's a dog, so I was kind of afraid of dogs. When I was a kid. I, I was definitely imaginary old. monsters. Sam. I oh. would always leave my window closed no matter how hot it was so the vampires wouldn't get me. I was once afraid that the Headless Horseman would come out from bed and i was extremely convinced that that was going to happen once uh, in a while yeah. should children also i had to keep to the closet this. closed because i was used to, i used to read stephen king a lot. boogeyman short story scared the absolute yep. hell out of me long car trips are terrible i, I mean they are a waste of fossil fuel but Tor torpid tell us about your 12-hour trip when you uh, i think time you stop I've had to. I've done eighteen hours from one top of the top of the country to the bottom. Yeah, I'm so sorry. That you should show mommy and daddy your. Not... Yeah, show mommy and daddy your pictures. Come on. Birthday your pictures. parties. Are... Show them your pictures. Um. Fun because you get presents. depressing because you never really Happy get what you want. Your Happy Valentine's. Having a baby inside <laughs> my body would be. Uh, Horrifying, actually. Weird. <laughs> Mind and prank. Thank you. Who makes a mess. This is Death Stranding. Norman Reedus, Edis the fetus. Uh, who makes a mess should that's, be... That's, that's four. Should be... Forgiven. Been... This should be called... Welcome to the Feast Farm. The word mom. <laughs> uh, the word mom makes me feel... Happy. 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 I was waiting for that and I clicked that in an instant. There's, there's one other prompt that is better than that. Yes? This thing with the television. What thing? Bringing a set in and actually hooking it up. What about it? What thing? Well, it's ridiculous. Oh? Alessa is joining us now. Why? So run away. Watch it. This... Who listens when you come in and say goodnight to Jerry? feeling. Or, is that ridiculous too? Allison does. Yes. I do it for her. You've had a depressed, dysfunctional wife for six months. I've been here for two days and you're already seeing results. And you think you know better than I do? So what do you want? Do you want me to leave? No. Then I insist that you stop interfering. Yeah, it's been two days. It feels like it's been fucking years. Done. That's because we stop and read these lengthy sex journals these people have. <laughs> yeah. Don't read those sex journals, Alessa. Cover your eyes. None of her methods would ever work. No. No. Like, this In is fact, the kind of quack... Yes. Yeah. the quackery I would see Alex Jones promoting. Like... Legit, feeding that delusion to this degree is super dangerous. Because at some point, she will come out of the delusion, Stuck. and the longer she's been in it, and the more she believed in it, the she worse she's going to be when she comes out of it. Uh, hey, she's so, highly intelligent. She's so excited oh. when she wakes up, don't you think? He's referencing the psychiatrist. You're John Hurt? Yeah. I've had Allison's pain. Yeah. Yeah. These are delicious. She's Thank got that you. psychological further intelligence. She went for ma massage therapy for PTSD. Catherine thinks we should get a pet for Jody. 
what? Oh, God, a little dog bad. like Punky. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Animals are out of the question. What are you thinking about? Just trying to find ways to bring life back into the house, Mr. Overton. She's right my favorite part of acting is drinking from empty mugs. Yeah, Jody's so confined, it might be too much of a tease. I do that when nobody's looking. We could get one just like Punky. I do that when I forget that I emptied it out. <laughs> okay. It's great when you do it from a water bottle. Shelter. I'll see if they have one like Punky. <laughs> yep. If they don't, I'll just ask them to let us know the minute one comes in. Why not get a different kind? Allison, from what you told me about her dog's death and how painful it was, we shouldn't remind her of it. She does have a point, don't you think so, Michael? No. I guess so. Will you do it? Okay. Michael just wants Thank to eat you, breakfast Michael. and fucking You're the most peace. Wonderful husband ever. So is Catherine purposefully trying to sabotage them? Yes. Uh, uh, yes, uh, actually. I don't know. No. No, yes. Is the thing. Look, Mrs. Green. No, it's. Uh, I'm not it's, going to go into it now, but it's I'm a conversation saying, yes. to have at the end of the game. I'm sorry to barge in on you like this, Doctor Turner, but Kath, I mean, Miss uh, Randolph is really going. Yeah. To yeah. I thought she was doing right. It kind of yes. depends she on how you want to take it. in Jody's room, and now she's making me go to the animal shelter to get a dog. A dog? Yes, for Jody. Can you believe it? Michael, Mrs. Randolph, Catherine does know what she's doing. I don't think so. Really? Come on in. Like, he's an asshole, but he's 100% right. Michael is concerned with your approach to Allison's therapy. Yes, I... heard. Catherine was just telling me that Alison, in fact, has recovered a lot of energy, and that her lethargy has disappeared. Would you agree? Yes. I guess so. Please, sit down. You seem unsure. Yes, she has a lot of energy. She's also free of any indication of depression. Well, that sounds good. That sounds very good. Is this true, Michael? That's how it appears to be, but... Allison still believes that our daughter's alive, and Catherine's making it worse. Sorry, making what worse? Her condition. Your wife is actually showing some initial signs of recovery. Michael... Returning to normal for Allison is going to be a complex and delicate journey. Now, I can see that you're feeling left out, but you can be very helpful in her recovery. And what's needed most, indeed, the most essential ingredient, is your cooperation. Then you think I should do what Catherine says? Yes, I think it would be most helpful. And I should get her the dog. Yeah, I think it's a wonderful idea. Yeah, how did Catherine get there ahead of him? She doesn't have a car. Magic. Taxi? I can see now that Michael was more upset than I'd realized. I thought at the time that he was just confused by the process and that simply focusing on the results might put him at ease, but now it seems that what's troubling him most is the dynamic between Michael and Catherine. And this isn't good. No. At least in my humble opinion. None of this is. It's tender, loving care. No. Yeah, surpri surprise. He's... Turns out Dr. John Hurt's not good at his job. Michael he wasn't mad about that life. dynamic. He's uh... mad because she's... Beating a delusion. I, I disagree. disagree. I disagree. No, he's yeah. right. He's acting in Allison's best interest. I no. disagree. No. Do you yeah, think Michael should get a pet for Jody? No. 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 My Jody's sexual dead. appetite is uh just right. Allison is rather than even progress. even even with my sexuality, this uh, is way too much. Uh, I disagree. 
Disagree, yeah, no. Is it a good my, idea? my favorite part about doing this on stream was low-key answering a handful of these honestly, but mixing them in with lies. Yeah, yeah, no, that's the thing. It's always which one. Uh, which one is the lie? No, it's not a good no. Does so she's like making an illusion. She's making progress in that yes. she's not depressed anymore, but she's fucking be... getting uh, worse in a way. Let's see. Uh, let's say driven and level headed. As a child. Yeah, out of I all of us here, probably most. best. <laughs> yeah. I'd I, let's see, a child enjoy myself when... When I was being Hello. entertained! <laughs> well... I mean... I was entertained I like... when I was entertained! I like yeah. when, I like sure. when I'm around people. Oh no. Alright, we're back here. Let's see. more about orgy. Let's see, is it just the same... I think the patient no, folders no. don't change. No, that's uh, no. No, that's... No. Just, uh... That's Allison's. So, I think we kind of have to read this one. Yeah, someone else can take this one. Rafferty. Uh, uh, <laughs> yep. yeah. Okay, subject. Allison Overton, age 28. Married? Yes. See intake interview for Michael Overton. Physical disabilities? None. Medication? Seconal and Valium. Previous mental illness? Prior to automobile accident of February 20th, 1996, was treated for postpartum depression after the birth of her child. Antidepressants were prescribed. Patient was treated for two months as an outpatient. Has been under the care of Dr. Canby of Providence Hospital, who I guess that's a character, since the automobile accident which killed their only child. <laughs> Passing note. She's treated for both wrong direction. By the way, her kid's dead. Allison was first revealed to the was first referred to the Chrysalis Institute by Dr. Canby at Providence Hospital. She is suffering from a severe case of post-traumatic stress disorder, coupled with parental loss of child syndrome. Jody, her five-year-old girl, was killed two months ago. Patient exhibits extreme disassociation traits. She is listless, despondent, and detached. She has created a fantasy world where her child is still alive. After treating her for a mere seven weeks, can be attempted to shock Allison out of her state of delusion by showing her photographs of the accident scene and of Jody in the war. Fucking so and I that didn't you, work. I want to stop you just for two seconds, Rafferty. One, second all, is for insomnia. Two, there is no such thing as parental loss of child syndrome. There's no such thing. So Val Valium is a depressant that helps you sleep, and second all is for insomnia. I, I can't believe she's messed up. I don't understand. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Maybe they are right to get her off the medicine. Well, Maybe. no, you, you'd only, you don't, first, she just shouldn't be on fucking Val. She shouldn't be on either of them. She doesn't have problems yeah. sleeping. She has fucking depression. And PTSD. Yeah. It's just stupid. Okay. Everybody here sucks. Get yep. down. No. Supervisor. Okay. Okay. And also, here's a plot hole. Um, rather than institutionalize Allison, I will supervise her in-home care with four in-clinic visits per week. Does Allison ever go to the clinic? Yes. She does? They, okay. Now yes, they don't show it on screen, but this like happened a while back, basically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so in other words, all this interesting stuff here, like we're not we're not going to show you that air quotes around interesting. Oh boy. No, Michael, the husband, has informed me that Allison is extremely reticent to visit the Chrysalis Institute. He told me to be prepared. I can't read this like John Hurt. I wish it was John Hurt. I am confident. Prepared. I am confident. Next page. That I will be able to handle the situation. Can be is a wretched fool. Oh, man, I wish we could hear John Hurt say that. Can be is a wretched fool. I must get his invitation to the upcoming Pacific you, Northwest you, Psychiatric Retreat. Do you want me to take a crack at it? Go for sure. it. Sure. Can be is a wretched fool. I must get his get his invitation. Hold on, I need to move this closer. I need to read it. <laughs> Rest in peace. I can't believe I, Willow's fucking dead. I must. I must get this invitation to the. The upcoming Pacific Northwest Psychiatric <laughs> Retreat revoked. Spending two weeks in the San Juan Islands with that arrogant dolt is more than I can handle. Call Harrigan and arrange this. Brief history. Miss Allison, o Miss Allison Overton, age 20. What? Is that 20? 28. 28. 28. Okay, it's a little blurred on this screen. Uh, was un unable to participate beyond head nods during the admissions interview. She... She avoided eye contact, and Mr. Overton essentially pro 
provided medical and psychiatric history. Met Mr. Overton while attending college and two married... Met Mr. Overton while attending college, and the two married during the last year of studies, received a degree in commercial art, developed a small-time part in business after they moved to the Rogue Valley, enjoyed a successful career until death of their daughter Ju Jody in a car accident. Psych psychi psychiatric history is benign, with no known contributing factors to the current psychiatric word that can't be seen because they didn't face this outright. Upstate. Current, 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 the next page. current, current functioning, striking, striking absence of emotional responsiveness was, was well, and according to Mr. While Overton, at while at office, according to Mr. Overton, she was not over medicated. Restricted range of affect appears compatible with the numbing experience that occurs as a result of the significant trauma. Husband stated that she has avoided any active participation in her profession. All projects have been on hold for over three months. Husband states that it that his wife had this diminished interest in anything happening around home except reading, often sec uh, secreting herself secreting. herself in daughter's bedroom. She locks herself in that room for hours and refuses to respond for any attempts at communication from Mr. Overton except to say, "Please leave me alone." Mr. Overton states that while they have been non-sexual, that she sleeps poorly while staying in bed most of the time, and that she refuses to even see her own mother, who has traveled to Oregon from California several times due to the, the death of her grandfather. Yeah, granddaughter. Immediate treatment goals. Contact Catherine Randolph at the Schneider Clinic and check on her availability to assist in the critical case. Symptomatic patterns and diagnostic justification. Mrs. Overton has been exposed to the traumatic death of her daughter. She has manifested at least three dissociative symptoms. One, a subjective meaning of numbing detachment and absence of emotional responsiveness. Two, behaves as if in a daze. Three, impairments in occupation, social, and marital functioning. All you have to do is treat the oh. goddamn PTSD. Oh. Okay, my throat's starting to get sore. Can someone else take this? Torpid. I ain't doing shit. Fuck Come off. Come on, Torpid. We've all read You're the it. only one. He's not going to read yep. it, so. Yeah. The case notes for Michael Overton. <laughs> Congrats, you figured Dave. it out. You... <laughs> I'm Dave. Torpid. I don't do anything. <laughs> April 28, 1996. Brief history. Athletic man. At that looking 28-year-old married man came in for the appointment. Very distraught. Following a brief telephone contact on... April 13th, 1996. His seven-year-old daughter was killed two months ago in a single automobile accident. Patient was driving and road conditions were slippery. Daughter who was not wearing seatbelt was killed on impact. Patient is seeking some form of assistance on treatment for his wife who is described as frozen in grief since the accident. Current oh. function. Mark while was driving. Patient, while, while patient spent majority of time talking about emotional state of his wife, I am equally concerned about the agitation and anger he manifested in my office. Seems unable to process, effectively and actively avoided talking about his own feelings on gr loss and grief. He has obviously received little support from wife, unable to go to work, lacks skills to work through the stages of grief, says the problem is that someone has to take care of his wife. It appears to me that his by focusing attention on his wife's distress, he is avoiding processing his own grief. She is angry and needs to place the blame on someone, something or someone else. Currently refuse support from a network of community races, resources that are available. Immediate treatment goals. It appears the patient's stiff upper lip and need to place his wife needs before his own can only make this tragedy worse to a critical incident. Made referral to Winter Spring Center for Grief Counseling. Leave both Mr. and Mrs. Overton can benefit talking out this personal tragedy, both individually and conjointly. It's just if he felt a professional rehabilitative effort was needed for his wife and him, I could recommend psychiatric nurse who specialize in outpatient treatment and home in home care. The patient was immediately responsive to the suggestion, informed of the substantial cost of the care. The patient seems unconcerned, reporting he has a trust fund that can be utilized. Mm. Systemic <laughs> patterns in diagnostic justification. Uh, blah, blah, diagnostic, yep. blah, adjustment disorder with mixed emotions and content. Re prescription note. Note, contact Catherine R Randolph and let her know her husband has signed release for her to confer with me on this case. 
Okay. So there we go. That's why he's fine taking off a job for six months, is that he's got a trust oh, fund. I think, I think this is probably just the same. Yeah, or no. the same. No. Or no. Nope. Rack Like this? Okay. Oh yeah, psychiatric quarterly special report. Remember you'll <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> one night only. Disorders of sexual desire. That's more she than one on... night. <laughs> but, this, but this get experimental. <gasps> she sits on her hands, shifts her weight nervously side to side, looks at the floor. I thought it would go away eventually. She says in a thin, tired voice that it was just a phase, but eventually never came. It didn't go away. Her husband, sitting stiffly on the opposite end of the couch, doesn't look at her. He looks out the window. I try to, you know, start a little foreplay, but she just pushed me away. It seemed like I repulsed her. It's been almost a year now. She takes a breath, starts again, haltingly. There's just one thing I want to know. She says... <laughs> Um, have you talked to many people like us? I mean, in this, a common situation? Common? Try epidemic. The topic under discussion is sexual desire. An instinct ought to flow as freely as the urge for a fine meal or the inclination to sleep. Okay, who said sleeping was their number one thing earlier in the quiz? I, I, don't I, think, know. I, was, I think I was joking about them being that being Torpid's big thing. Torpid thing. So it's torpid for an estimated one in five Americans, some 38 million adults. It doesn't flow at all. Okay, when was this? Never mind. Wait, there's, I, there's, I, there's, into this, though. there's. I can't believe I lack a libido. There's six of us in this call. <laughs> and for nine Me million of more, all people without one. <laughs> it flows completely out of control. Sexual desire disorders now constitute the leading problem in clients seeking sex therapy. <laughs> <laughs> the other people who had fine orderly sex did not seek any therapy whatsoever. <laughs> While anorgasmia in women yeah. and premature ejaculation in men once dominated the practice. <laughs> I'm so done with this fucking game. <laughs> anorgasmia. Now, as a result of the pioneering research of Dr. Williams Masters and Virginia Johnson's 1960, people suffering such conditions can readily find self help solution. Also, I, also, al also, I did not read that name as Virginia at first. <laughs> <laughs> Anor Everybody knows Anorgasmia is a character. There we go. That's my so next glad character. you cut out. Uh, today, says Dr. Deborah Manning, director of the Human Sexuality Program at Whaler College in Pittsburgh. Sex therapists are, see, are seeing the more elusive problems. It's unclear whether the surge in the number of Americans seeking help reflects an actual rise in desire disorders or whether such problems have simply become more visible. Next page. Hold on. There we go. During the 1960s, popular expectations of sex changed in profound ways. As a result of the birth control pill, women could, for the first time in history, separate sex from fears of pregnancy. Simultaneously, new cultural messages glorified casual sex. Now, from seductive clothing ads to the estimated 176 monthly sex scenes aired on prime time television. <laughs> really? Citation needed. Free sex has emerged as the principal symbol of the good life. Sexual health has become a right to which most Americans feel entitled. And so they seek help. A woman who, after smiling her way through her wedding photos, breaks down in tears the thoughts of entering the honeymoon suite. A lawyer with four girlfriends who daily juggles multiple frenzied appointments for sex with court appearances and client consultations. They come from all walks of life. No profession, age, class, ethnicity, or gender accepted. That which unites them is fear. Sexy fear. Sexy fear, yes. Fear of tender, loving care. As <laughs> children, <laughs> many of them learn that caring too much for others is risky. Others learn as adults that happiness carries consequences. Instead of an intimate and loving act, sex became a tool to manipulate or to distance those who might otherwise get too close. Controlling sex became a way to control fear. For years, it was great. Despite jobs <laughs> and kids, they could find just to be alone together. The sex was tender, intimate, and thrilling. Familiarity only made it better, but that was before the accident. 
before their two-year-old son nearly drowned in the backyard swimming pool. The baby had survived, but he'd suffered extensive, irreparable brain damage. Nothing kills your libido faster. Since then, her husband's hands had felt like tentacles against her flesh. I didn't know what to do, says Kevin. Finally, we got a number from... uh, my screensaver kicked in. Sorry, guys. I don't know why. <laughs> Finally, we got a number from our family practitioner. It was three more months before we actually made the call. Computer Most trying experts... to tell you to stop. So I'm trying to tell me something. Most experts squirm at the idea of a norm with respect to sexual appetite. And hypoactive or inhibited sexual desire is therefore defined in only the loosest of terms. Uh, an easy job. Clinically, it means experienced sexual urges, fantasies, and or activity less than twice a month. However, as long as both partners in a sexual relationship remain happy, once a month can be considered normal and appropriate as once a day. I assign an HSD diagnosis only if there's been a change in desire, says sexologist Manning, and if it's causing the patient distress. Often, it's actually the victim's partner who experiences distress, explains Jason, 35, an artist whose wife has HSD. I would rather ignore it as long as I could. Force myself not to think about sex, he says. Unfortunately, every time I use my brush, it's like a conduit between me as I dress dress my subjects. Um, Then she'd give in, I guess out of guilt. She'd lie there, limp, just waiting for me to get it over with. She might as well have been on Mars. I feel terrible afterward, guilty and dirty. I wanted her to get help. Prodded by their partners, victims of desire disorders often show up for therapy, complaining of impotence or anorgasmia. But beginning in the mid-1970s, therapists began to notice that the real problem was often the victims didn't actually want sex to begin with. In her groundbreaking 1979 work, Disorders of Sexual Desires, Dr. Helen Singer Kaplan explained that, unlike sexual arousal, desire exists primarily in the mind. As a result... Call my peace. She's just not that into you. (laughs) Just not that into you. As a result, Kaplan found HSD stems not from lack of ability to perform, but from a lack of motivation. Oh my god. With you? It's still going, and there's another page. <laughs> oh my god. Hold on, Lolo. How many more pages are there? A bunch. Oh, Far too many. Are. Okay, I think yeah, we're, done. we're done. We're done. Fun. We're done. We're yeah. done. Uh, I, I think we're. The worst part is they cite, like, they just had to go to the library and just grab one random book, and they didn't even do that. <laughs> no, but th- here's the thing. You have to think about this, right? Somebody or some people sat down and wrote all this. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely did. Well, they had years to work on this crap, right? I guess. Many persons think that psychiatry I am so shocked. One thing, psychoanalysis. Uh, this is no Actually, full bush. I'm already let down. Just give it a moment. Give it a time. You never know. It properly can be given only by a doctor... She just tears off her clothes. She has a very deep voice. Specialty of psychoanalysis. Treatment may go on for years. I appreciate the. Oh no. Wait. This is this is weird. I can't wait till Michael gets back. Get out of there. Get the fuck out of there. Jody will be so happy. Everything is much. You're not supposed to be in there. I'm sorry. Where's Bill Moomy? I never thought I'd feel this hopeful again. It's wonderful. I just can't. Here is the wise old I'm good at acting. Person, beloved Dr. Zero. Hey, it's Dr. One of Giggles. The prerequisites of being a good doctor is to be sure the staff is on their <laughs> toes. What's this? Either we've just been invaded or there's an emergency. Okay. Well, yeah, there's a reason we don't be... come here that much. Yes, we were expecting that to be full of loose, but here it was full of shit. <laughs> so I'm just get it because she was bent over. It looked like she was gonna gotcha. Um. Uh. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Did it break? Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, I mean, need be you can just restart the game and continue where you left off. It's not like it's the end of the world. Yeah. All right. One second. Uh, this cool. is exhausting. Yes. The game itself couldn't take it anymore. 
I don't know. I'm having a good time with my friends. Just. <laughs> well, yeah. You're happy just... Valentine's Day. I think. I think this Valentine's is. A, I think this is a sign that after we do this one thing, that we're gonna. Carnival to, to quote one of my favorite movies. You're a sick motherfucker, Matt. <laughs> no. Uh oh. Um. No, it broke. Um, broke completely. Huh. Oh my god. Awesome. I didn't know this game could break. What, I... does the map or the butterfly work? No. Nothing works. Is there like any physical keys you can use? To, like... That's what I'm trusting. And the answer is no. Fuck. I didn't know this could break. Oh <laughs> no, are you going to have to actually play through it all over again just to get to this? You know what? I don't think I will. Uh, are we going to? Uh, actually, I think there's a chapter select. Yeah. Is there? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we somehow broke okay. a game with DVD game mechanics. There's only one writer credited to this game. Oh, God. Now, it might be that the production designer, maybe, or the maybe the editor, jumped in and, and did more writing, but... The only writer credit is officially David Wheeler, who's also the director. Mm. Okay, how is there a chapter select? Got to the continue. Because there's just begin, and it just says re resume last game. And hit OK, and it just brings me here. Oh, it might be because we're not didn't complete the game, we can't go to chapter select. No, I don't mean chapter. Um, I'm gonna reinstall the game now. Maybe, maybe leave the game. Uh, no, wait. Did you get this on Steam or GOG? I GOG. Try verifying the game cache. I don't know if that. I don't know if GOG has that. It try does. That. It does. Yeah, try that. Uh, if this doesn't work, then guess what we're doing? Ranking. So God, we didn't get to the good shit yet, though. Oh, there's a part two of this. Yeah, um, I'm not checking the GOG forums. The Steam forums, uh, a lot of people reporting this happens to them, that every now and then the game just soft locks and the buttons stop working. So, is Excellent. there... Did they, did they say there's a way around it, or just... Nope. A bunch of people just said it every now and then it just happens, and it seems to be random. Well, fuck. Welp. I do not have time. Uh, they said, wait, there is one suggestion if you could resize the window. Okay. That, that... Uh, yes, now some other people are reporting that that's resizing it didn't work and verifying the cache and game integrity also didn't work. Mm. Oh well. Welp. Dang. We'll just that try it again next year. <laughs> so just uh, the only... to... <laughs> yeah, the only suggestion is to play it in compatibility Windows Vista compatibility mode. Try that real quick. Oh, that's... Uh, Windows Vista compatibility mode. That's when you like. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know how to do it. And I just let me hold on. Yeah, and it says you can skip the videos, so you can actually just skip through all the stuff. But it could, but that's still, still a lot. Quizzes, I guess. Um, there's also, it's this one's uh, messing with one of the uh, files, and if you change a value, it might help. God, I love this. This game is the gift that keeps on giving. I'm gonna just, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna post this to you directly, Lolo. Wow, all the kitty drawings were donated from an elementary school in Oregon. Huh. If only they knew what they were doing. <laughs> nope. Nope. You know, I, it did. I think we're good. I think we're good. <laughs> Unless so you want to put this off until. I think we're good.
We can yeah, always we revisit can. it. We can. We can always come back later. And there's yeah. always Valentine's Day next year. Well, yeah. you also have this thing where we have ranked games and then you've come back just yes. to finish them. We we have, but also... We just do this real we, quick. Well, I don't know. I'm sitting at 10,000 fun bucks. We need to finish this. I don't think yes. this, this bullshit. We'll finish it another time, but let's... Yeah. It's let's so it easy to get back to where you I are, though. I don't have time for that. That's just... And also, that's <laughs> bullshit. That I, I just get soft-locked out of it. Like, I'm not dealing with it. have this do it again later on. It's all right. So somebody there, it's not like there out. isn't several other playthroughs of this game. Yeah, but our playthrough is the best. No, it's not. <laughs> no, mine is. That is also true. Um, anyway, so what's the thing that's like... Okay, that, I mean, this, like, this is... Like, nightmare? Well, let's... God, we didn't even get tits on a window! <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get a lot what? of things. We get... didn't! We didn't get a dead dog! <laughs> we didn't oh. get fucking Catherine getting hurled downstairs! You know what? Actually... Mm. Yeah, we could just play the ending. You know... Yeah... Here. Let me... There's Here. just video files, that, you can yeah, just drop them. Yeah, put up, put up a... Uh, put up oh, a, you can just a boot up fucking YouTube. Yeah, yeah put up a Here. YouTube that, of the playthrough. Let's yeah. just finish this. Let's, let's do that. Exact video. Yeah, unfortunately, bag of magic food. The good shit's not until the second half. Why would you want to start with good? This game is brave. It challenges you. Um. Yeah, you don't get to hear a fucking herbal shampoo. I uh. Here, let me. I. I got here. This is the organic herbal shampoo. Uh, don't die. I, I, I got it. All right. God damn it. It's going to put on Super Great Friends playthrough. Hold on. There we go. Okay, but let me just figure this out. Okay. I, oh, I know how I can do this. I mean, let, let's just get... I just want that that fucking cow painting. That's all I want. Oh, did they re did did they really remove the YouTube playment uh, playing in VLC thing? No, it should still work. It's not. Let me just double check. I'm just actually just really annoyed right now. I, I just go, just go find another video of this. This is just I'm not doing this bullshit. Aww. Yeah. Don't be angry. It's, it's Valentine's Day. I mean, my suggestion was just going to be, uh, what if we put it off for now? Just everybody. I, I, it, I, I'm done with this. <laughs> I I just want this to be done now. Right. Okay. And then, I love I the saying, best of giant. Fun. No, I was going yeah. to say to, this has to the good bit. Us. This I'm just. Let's just watch this because this has it. Yeah, I can just it. scrub it back and forth. You know what I'm saying? Give folks uh, just a taste of what, yeah. what this scene has here. Oh, All yeah. right, see, you got that yeah. stuff? The yeah, they're meditating. Phase. Remember yeah. the meditation? And now we're meditating. All right. Remember her uh, expertly <laughs> oh. operating pants? And then yep. she's like, no, 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 no. Put them all back on. Put them <laughs> all. Put, this is, put it all back on. Get dressed. The body scan meditation. <laughs> Get dressed. Textbook, yeah. And then, uh, you know what? <laughs> just uh, walk out the door. Okay. Thanks. Goodbye. Hey, told the story. And that was three X. It was a it. story. I'm not driving into Ashland tonight. It's been a long time since Jody's had a slice of pizza. <laughs> She's right, Michael. I really Jody like pizza. Asked for pizza. <laughs> Is pizza a sex thing? What's happening? <laughs> I think it's all a sex thing. <laughs> all right. I mean, at some point, you <laughs> just seem to be like, "What the fuck's wrong with both of you?" I just. 
Oh, here uh, we go. Let's spell it out. But I'm <laughs> shocked. Okay, I know. I said it before, but I'll never, never let that happen again. I mean it. Never again. Guys. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. Now I got to go get a fucking pizza. <laughs> 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 we have we have a lot of money to spend here. So first off, who do you want to fuck? Fuck that thing. Man. <laughs> fuck that stuff. The girl on the left is saying. Uh. <laughs> uh that Guess what? Did you hear about? I've got a joint in my pocket. <laughs> Let's go smoke it. <laughs> I feel totally fresh. <laughs> I, I think, I think she's a cop. <laughs> yeah, she's saying I've got a joint Let's in my go pocket. Smoke marijuana. Let's go smoke cop. marijuana and get high. And she's like, "No, you're a fucking cop. <laughs> you're clearly a you're, cop. You're clearly I've never met you. We're in a park. <laughs> totally a cop. You uh, got your badge behind your back right here. You're literally holding your badge behind your back. Can I choose this one? You guys? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I'm gonna shut the door. Like, buy a magazine, for God's sakes. Are you kidding? Dude, you are con- Oh, no. right, what, huh? Oh, sorry. 98, he had the internet. There you go, she here's the yeah. best scene in the game. Yeah. The best it's not scene the best, in the though. game, it's true. I hope the ending is just this shot for like 10 minutes. Credits? Yeah, and then credits. <laughs> Thank you for playing. There are 42 other endings. <laughs> Enjoy. I'm pretty sure this video also around. goes over the ending, <laughs> oh, so. Yeah. I found the pizza! I found the pizza! <laughs> ah, two for one. Two for one. Is he going to stumble upon the accident scene? You are so right, Alex. He's walking away with oh, the yeah. people in pristine white suits. <laughs> Oh, three, 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 three. Honey, I'm home. God you damn you. God fuck you. Fuck it. No, no, you did no, not earn no, this. No, 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 you don't get to do that. You, you did not earn you that. You don't get to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> oh, little Caesars. Yes, uh. So, been a terrible accident. in this video, or this, I mean, the, this is one of the endings I where just down the basically, yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know, there's probably fingerprints. Alice, or, or no, Catherine fell down the stairs. Oh, maybe she's still alive. <laughs> Which is most of the endings. She's not as super dead as yeah, they the didn't other put a was, was that when she was, true. was she hit with the, the sledgehammer? No, this is but the one where Allison shoves her down the stairs. Okay. Nipples against the glass. Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird neighborhood, daytime, nighttime. But here comes the best ending. Be out there, huh? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Where she falls Look down the stairs. <laughs> so peacefully. So this is the ending everyone gets. Remember when she was the one Torvid got. John Hurt in a bonnet. <laughs> goo goo, ga ga. <laughs> What do you think? Wait. Which is you club her upside the head with a sledgehammer. Uh. Yep. Wait. And Technically, yeah, there's two versions of this one. There's the longer version where you see her get sledged okay. upside the head and fall on the stairs, Wait, and then there's what? this one which just skips to it. I got the one that just skips to it. Huh. Alex, what happened? Did she get her <laughs> noggin uh, conked by the stairs thing, and now she's brain dead? Or does she think she's the daughter? Did they brainwash her? This is the <laughs> correct response. <laughs> yep. So, yes, there's the ending for this game. Yeah, there is a, another more elaborate one. There's a bunch it's of like, endings, actually. Yeah. Let's see. Should I... There are eight endings. The one don't, I sent don't you worry has about the it. super long ending. 
Oh, okay. The super long ending is the canon one. That's the one when they released it as a film. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There. That's... We saw the good bits of this game. Okay. We sure did. Thank you we for... We saw the naughty bits. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so where are we uh, putting so this? So let's put it in 19. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's like the... That's the, like, the fascinating nightmare. nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Let's put it there and let's wash our hands of this. You would can't rate wash this, our brains. You would rate this higher than King's Quest. Yes. Okay, so once again, 20, 19, 20, and 21 are very specialized categories. 19 is for the, this is an experience you we had. It's not good, but this is a unique experience that you can't get anywhere else. Okay. But do you want to get this experience? I don't think anybody should. Yeah. This game deserves to be relegated to the dustbins of gaming history. Never to it, be it's, seen. It's like an anti-game, which is what, like, it's obviously a movie that they shoehorn these questions that make no sense into. Um, you get these side stories that have nothing to do with anything. Well, the, so I was reading up on production of it, and originally it was intended straight up just to be a movie. But there was huge budget problems, so the uh, guy who put it all together worked with Trilobite, and basically, like you said, shoehorned a game into it just because they they couldn't do the the without that budget. So, right. So it's not a good movie, and it's not a good game. Whereas I don't know, King's Quest at least has a game going on, not a I'm, good one. Yeah. I'm standing very firm at 21. This is this was a mis. I mean, we made it funny, but this is a miserable fucking experience. I, know. And I, I still say 19. Uh... I honestly wish Rick had hired in D, if I'm being honest. That's me. Well, what do you say, Lolo? You're the you're the Uh Hmm. I I definitely like I get Axe's point at being twenty one, that actually is something to consider. Cause most of the things that it's like getting out of it, it is mostly just people playing it. But then again I, guess I, I always found it funny and garbage and but trashy. Then again, the thing with 21, mostly, is the fact that... You should like, just never bother at all. Yeah, it's like not even someone playing it is really interesting. Because it's more, like... None of these games are really interesting to watch. Like, if looking at those... And like, those... Like, they're just not... Like, they, they just aren't even interesting in that case. Where it's kind of funny to watch... Or, no, oh, that's not where it's just kind of fun to watch someone play this. Okay, so I can see if you're if you're going by if it was a shared experience with multiple people, then yeah, I can see where it might be more fun than King's Quest. I don't know. I think it's just like an interesting, unique experience that Yeah. It's definitely not for everyone, but I, I honestly think it's worth seeing I, because it's fucking hilarious. I do think nineteen is probably then the spot that it'd go to, because I don't think it's just okay. 20. 19 yeah. it is. At least that, that's I mine. Said, that's yeah, it, it, it doesn't deserve to go any higher than... No, 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 it's, not, it's not oh, going no, any no. higher. Oh, no, it'll kill. Where, oh, no. It is relegated to 19. No, the way I see it is 20, 19, 20, and 21, much like one, uh, 1, 2, and 3 are just all very specialized categories. Yeah, because I, I view 19 is designed specifically for things that aren't that aren't good, but are things that are unique experiences for just, like, this is what not to do, but you can also have fun if you have a bunch of your friends around to basically shit-talking. It's something to see but not play. You could yeah. put it in a DVD player at a party if people were sufficiently liquored up. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I think yeah. even then. I think even then. You want to end I mean, friendships? Depends on how <laughs> trash we're talking, Axe. Oh, also, what the hell do we even call the tone for this? Bad. Maybe, don't you have sexy? Erotic. Oh, I do, right. Erotic. I have no I idea. mean, it's Erotic. supposed to be sexy. It's not, but... So Erotic. Yeah, also, why... Like, how, how many... <laughs> how many... Uh, let's Erotic. See, what are the... Oh, right. H plus... Uh, where's the T for titty? Uh, that's H+. That's the... Oh, okay. 
And the double yikes. Yes. Uh, let's see. Erotic. Okay. So I think this is your first game where charm will be a thumbs down. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 There's no yes. charm to this. The <laughs> anti charm charm. Negative yeah. charm. Uh, I mean. It can soft lock for no reason. Of course. Thumbs down the gameplay. Uh, so down gameplay I wouldn't even touch, but the other yeah. two next to it, I would definitely put a thumbs down yes. for. Yeah. Writing is absolutely. Yeah, just... writing is bad. Actually, even... horrible. It doesn't even look good. Oh, right off the, the bat. The isn't good either. The acting's pretty foul. It looks good for an FMV game from 1993. Sadly, it's from 1998. Yeah, <laughs> it is. I mean, we are no longer playing it because of a soft lock. Uh, a soft lock is pretty common, apparently. I never saw it, but... Yeah, yeah that's buddy. weird. That's weird knowing you that you never got the soft lock for your kind of luck with these things. Because I was tuned to the soft core. It, it does say it's random. Mm, you're you're set for Titty Window, and what you got was Buck. I want Titty Window 2, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, we gave you solutions, and you putted us, and then just watched the videos. Because I'm very tired, and I got a marathon I know. to barf. No, the, I... I wouldn't want to come back to this, but at the same time, there's a part of me like, I kind of have to see how bad this gets. There there are ways you can watch other people play this. There. I but mean, none of them are you getting suffering. Right? Yes. But v, anyway, anyway. V so, is so not... Lolo, what is our path forward for tomorrow? Uh, Yeah, hold, hold on. Let's talk about that. Okay. So, yeah, yes. Compose. There is a... Yeah, hold on. Let me, let me just do this. There we go. I had to tweet that out. Okay. Uh, let's do this. <laughs> okay. Oh God, I thought I thought I drank all my water and I took a big tip back and almost drowned. <laughs> Sorry, this night has ruined me, and I thought you said a big tip back, and I was really confused. <laughs> <laughs> Torpid, go to bed, or I don't know, read a sexy book. <laughs> all right. Well, tomorrow, yes. Um, so. If you're watching us on Twitch, you can go to my YouTube channel at youtube.ldp.life in your browser. Uh, I will try and have this uploaded sometime this weekend. Um, I will, if this even takes. Um, I will also, if you're watching us on YouTube, miraculously, I, there's also the Twitch channel, which you can go to twitch.tv slash the puzzle and watch these be recorded live Fridays at 2.30, Fridays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Saturdays at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sundays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, there's also my personal Twitter, at Lo the Puzzle. The show's Twitter, at Hazeltown Story. There's also a Discord channel where there's polls that occasionally get up or go up. And there's also Patreon, which had two yeah. and five dollar tiers. Yes. Uh, so tomorrow, uh, I mentioned the times, except there, the, there is an exception in the case of a marathon, which there won't, will be one tomorrow. Uh, that will start at noon. Uh, in which we are doing a bunch of requests. Um, it is a very weird list of requests, but it should be a good show. So, yes, uh, that will be tomorrow, uh, February 15th at 12 p.m. East, or 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, with that, uh, I'm just going to show you over to on. So, yeah, let's just do that. And I am a lover boy. Yeah. Hug, your, hug your shame, shame boy. boy. Hug your shame boy. Become a lover boy. Whip the shame boy. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye.